Welcome to Whispers and Choco. This is how we do, and if you don't know, now you do. I'm Shawnee Whispers. And I'm Mike Choco. Together we are Mike and Sean in purebred loco. Oh no, we fucked that up. Okay. Yeah. And we might go loco. And we might go loco. And just in case you wonder what went wrong. Or you just in case you wonder what took long. We'll say that we're sorry. And this show is going. This show is going. Yes, Almost sir. Everything. Welcome. It's Thursday, December twenty fourth. I lost it's everything. The twenty third. What's today's date? Can you hear? Nope. It's the 29th. I mean, uh, the twenty third, rather. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we, got, we got six, de- six um, of them wrong. I have nothing in my headset. <laughs> uh, at today all. is December twenty third. You hear my voice? Yeah, microphone. I can hear your voice. Okay. This is my voice. Yes. Nope, this is I'm my conscience. <laughs> I had the intro and it just popped, popped dead. So well, for the guess who's back? There is uh, Sean, a.k.a. Whispers Lynch. I am back with a vengeance. And he's going to whisper. That's the greatest part about this. Yes. I'm going to try. <laughs> it's it's going to fail. Um, yeah. Thanks for holding it down for a few weeks. I was completely um, sick. I had a cold. Uh, and hold on. Let me just fix my headset. Um, I was out. Yeah, wow, that was my headset. My bad. Wow. Yeah. Um, I was out, out, out and out. Like, I had a really nasty cold, and I wasn't sure if it was COVID. I told you. Yeah, yeah. COVID. So, uh, <clears throat> kind of laid low and, and stayed home for 10 days, wrapped myself in bubble wrap, and, you know, I had a mask on at home, so I didn't get my cat cold, uh, get to give them a cold. The and, last you know, thing you want to do is an asshole cold. cat uh, yeah, my animals, you know, they mean a lot to me. Mm. More than some people. Oh, Sorry. yeah. And because you don't want to get anybody cold. You don't want to give anybody you know, the cold. Right. right. You don't yeah. want to, right, not get anybody cold. But, yeah. <laughs> I want you give to. anybody the cold. I don't want you to be cold, but if. You no, know. but, yeah. So, anyway, I'm feeling better. It wasn't COVID. Thank you very much. Yeah, so Yay, okay. applause. So, I'm Yay, back. And then as soon thing as thing. I get better, everybody else gets sick. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, our guest who's not here today is hopefully a, a cold yeah she's just a little congested and, or completely full of well, shit. what the problem is that the cold <laughs> symptoms and I, I was sick before omnicron but the cold symptoms are what people are feeling yeah so, so yeah so uh slug is going to call in in the show uh and he since next week our other two guests are not going to make it, it looks like we're going to move slugger to next week and he'll come back very in good there you go so we can do this it all, all works again. out yeah pretty cool so uh yeah so how have you been buddy it's, I've, uh, yeah, I've been pretty good. I mean, you know, I brought, got a couple of people to sit in and talk and, and, and interview and keep something going on. And then last week it was just me and Mikey. And so we went all the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Mike, well, Mike is somebody to go through with. Yeah, know? I went right right through. Yeah, he's, he's an entertaining dude on his own. Yeah. And uh, so we did. And then the, the best part about what it was the anticipation of today's day with you and Mikey. Now, Sugga was going to bring his... See, it was the, the, our first Coquito challenge. Right. Everybody was supposed to bring something that they did on their own. Now, we don't... We, next week, we'll get to try out um, Sugga's classic Coquito. But in this show, as we talk and go on, we will be sampling Sean's Blanquito. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Blanquito. I, Blanquito. I mean, the name was great. Yeah, it's I great. thought I thought it was great. And then when you countered with Choquito, oh. I Choquito. Choquito. I, I thought that was brilliant. So I'm hoping that there's some kind of chocolate essence involved. Well, in I just think you should just don't but even worry about fact, what's in it. The fact that we have the Choquito and the Blanquito, <laughs> and they were simultaneously. That might be a better show name. Create, yeah, yeah, seriously. <laughs> it's a Choquito Blanquito show. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> so who uh, um Jen, my day bartender at Rebar, she said we should be called the two loud mouths from Queens. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I I thought it was hilarious when you counted with that. I was like, well, I can the, only I can't take all the credit. It was, it's hilarious. From the, from the I thought I thought it was hilarious. So Tara came up. Um, if you do, if you do 
because I've been doing this for years. You know, I've had I've I've been making well, I've wanted to and I've been a part of it, but I've never done my own. This is the first time I did my own. Right. Yeah, it's so simple. It's the simplest ingredients ever. But if you want to change it, like if you want to do something, to well, it, you that, have to be careful how you. I tweak think it. the beauty of it is that it's so it's really so tweakable and changeable. You could totally make any flavor you want. Like if if you think about what right. you want to do and put some effort into it. Um, you could really make anything you want with it. You so know, your what's your what's you don't have to like whatever your steps I don't, are. Listen, I, yeah, I don't. I'm not. I don't hide anything. I try. Like, is it like you want to hold it as your secret recipe, or you're like, no, hey. because I don't care. I'm not that guy. I'm. Not, I was never the guy. Remember when you had a dope pair of kicks and somebody's like, where'd you get those? And really, I ain't. I got it right there. Yeah, I, I would tell them. I don't care. <laughs> I would tell them because I was proud to have those damn things. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, I paid one ten for them, and I got them over at the, you know, the yeah. Coliseum. I'm like, hey, man, you try. You went to the Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but like, I, I would, um, I would, I would, I would definitely uh, not have a problem with letting people know hmm. what the the ingredients are. And I think it's no secret. It's 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 because of my heritage. It's, you know, because of my heritage and my DNA, I guess. Not because of my heritage of how I grew up. Yeah, no. Well, maybe, I guess, partly. You know, but anyway, I think it I'm, would be the same I'm, thing. My, isn't I'm it? half Puerto Rican, half Irish. But isn't blood. that how you blood and how you yeah, grew up? But I'm, I guess it is. Now yeah. more than I think about it. But anyway, um, I just I went with Patty's Irish whiskey, okay, which is always a home run to me. That's that to me is like the quintessential Irish whiskey. Everybody loves Jameson, which is eh, I'm not a big Jameson guy. I'm a Tullamore dude guy. Proper twelve. If you're gonna drink Proper Twelve's trash. If you're gonna drink, <laughs> if you're gonna drink like the the, the good, the better, the better Irish whiskey. You know, you have the good, the, the lower end, the middle, and the, there's no such thing as bad Irish whiskey. I can tell you that right now. I've tried them, almost all of them, unless the ones that you can't find. Well, it. you just said that Proper 12 is trash. I've tried Proper 12. That's an Irish whiskey. It's, yeah, it's trash. It's trash. It's, I, so well, you, I didn't like it. So, but yes, but... But I, I also tried it when it was really I've heard new. it's not rated well. It's not. It, it just, it has a weird, funky taste to it. It's not... So, if you've ever had patties, have you ever had patties? Yeah. Okay, so Patty's is like a clean tasting Jameson. Like really clean, like really no, you know, when you do a shot of Jameson, whether you like it or not, you're like, you know, it's like, yeah, it's, it's just nasty. It, it's, Jameson's it's, not good. It's just, well, Jameson it isn't meant to be good. shot. It's supposed to be drink what I, slowly. Well, I don't care. So sip. you take a sip of it and you make a, a nasty oh, well, face. I mean, <laughs> I don't make that nasty. face. With, you do. I don't <laughs> yeah. make that face with Tully. Yeah. I don't make that face with Hattie's. I don't make that face with Powers. You know, Powers is another one. But strong, you know, twelve, fourteen, eighteen dollars a bottle in a in a in a regular liquor. I think I paid fourteen. You could pay fourteen at uh. But I think that like whiskey itself, right? Like even if it's strong, you don't make a face like like it's sour. You know what I mean? That some, sour face. Some, you know, some, you make a strong face, like a face like I wow. This I, I mean a sour face, but I mean you a whiskey a, face. The whiskey yeah. face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically it. I, I use the, the the Patty's Irish whiskey, which I think is quintessential, and then I use um. Don Q, Puerto Rican rum, um, 100 proof, and then the regular Don Q silver. Oh, nice. So you have, you know, I, I probably could have just stuck with one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like you I mean, the, the 100 proof is probably on its own, but I thought I was worried that it was going to taste like, you know, like fuel. So I wanted the regular rum to kind of like balance it out. Okay. And uh, honestly, I think it, I, I really believe it came out delicious. I took it to, um, um, to our Christmas party at Rebar last Saturday. Nice. And it was a home run. I bought two bottles there, and, and they went quick. Once we cracked them, and people were like, wow. And, you know, sometimes you got people that are like, the reason, the, the good part is that I bought it, I broke it out when people are already drunk. But, you know, not drunk, drunk. Not drunk, drunk. <laughs> right, but, but they got that tipsy flow. To not, we're then not going to hold their opinion in. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know, maybe you're not tasting the alcohol as much, but you're like, you're not afraid to tell somebody it sucks if you're if you got a little tipsy right, right, on. Right. And everybody was like, "Man, listen, man, I'll tell you, I, I've had some bad shit, but this is really good, dude." And it's the reason why I figured it would be good is because I've had eggnog made back in the day with like like a Long Island iced tea of eggnogs, like mm. with every different kind of booze. So I'm like, why can't I just put rum and whiskey together? You and can, and yeah. and. It's the power of coconut and the taste of coconut, man. It's amazing. It over the, you know, yeah. I'm telling you. The condensed milk takes over everything. And I made a, ve a vegan version without condensed milk, and mm. it tastes just as just as good. Nice. So let's see um, let's see what you got. Where are, is are it? Are we starting? Are we going to start? Well, yeah. Along the way, we'll drink and talk. I love it. Because right. that's what we're supposed to do. I love it. So I, I didn't even have a sticker left over. Well, I that's made, all right. Because when I told Mike about this, and he was like, oh, my God, we're going to get fucked up. Yeah, like, I mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> we'll try not to get totally right. Yeah, I mean not totally, but just enough that the it's last like, time wow. I was here, I was a little, a little over the top. A little. It's okay. We forgive you. Well, it was that was our first show back after a really long layoff. Yeah, and you were a little overwhelmed. Mike, that's a lot, lo a lot, lot of it thinner than the, the first batch. The uh, little too excited. Yeah, I was very excited, mm. and I was. It was a, a weird day for me. But that wow, was delicious. Damn, this shit is good. All right, sip time. You ready? We're gonna take our sips. Here we go. I mean, come on, dude. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's like a. It's, it's smooth, like a perfect balance. It's, it's not, got like a. You yeah. feel it. You feel the alcohol. Like the worst thing with coquitos is some of them you don't taste any booze and like that's not the point Ooh. right you know what the what's the point the point is to have a couple of drinks and get a little nicey nice and tipsy this shit right here will get you tipsy i'm telling you oh I but it so. doesn't taste like it will get you wrecked or tipsy well the after is like oh you there you know it's there that's fuel yeah it's that's fuel. um that's fuel right but there. but it's i think it's masked well and i think it's i think the balance of uh like in if this was the zombie apocalypse we would use this to fl uh for our cars <laughs> yeah we could probably yeah but like this fuel 151 is no joke bro and i I, mm. I was so happy to find out that you know because bacardi 151 is not made anymore mm. they discontinued yeah, it. it's too lethal don q is is a they have 151 don q oh. and i've always i'm not a rum guy per se but I like, I always preferred Don Q for some reason. Like if I, I think I had it when I was a kid and I liked it, you know, when you're hanging out in Casino Park drinking or whatever. Right. And uh, I liked it when I used to make my, my uh, pina coladas, you know, the Frozens. I used to drink uh, Bacardi and Coke, right? Yeah. One night I went out, this place in Brooklyn, and it must have been a bad batch. Like, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was, I was more than tipsy, but I was sick, like sick to my stomach. And it was like, you know, how, like sometimes people, they don't clean it out and they just pour out like it, it was awful. Like I'd never felt like this before. And every time I had went near and I smelled the rum after that, I was like, you, no, so you thought it was a rum. It was probably yeah. something else. Yeah. And I and, was like, no, yeah. I'll stay away from yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I was like, and I have never gone back. But so I've had rum. I just have never had. I like rum. I, like I like Bacardi rum and tropical drinks. Mm. I, I could not. I could By never it. get down with a rum and coke. Oh I could, yeah, that was because it's man. double sweet when you realize later how much you were doing. I, just, I don't know. I was. I, listen, I could tell. I drink pina coladas all day long. Rum mm. runners, all those fancy shits that you could get in like DR, Puerto Rico, wherever you go. Bahamas. I'll drink those all day long. I'll have a headache the next day. But <laughs> if I have to taste the rum, I'm like, oh, it's it's just not a good tasting liquor to me. I prefer to you know that whiskey kind of yeah. Taste. So that, like I I give this um this blanquito blanquito a thumbs up. Thank you very much. You're thumbs welcome. up. I, I you know I thumbs agree. It was my the... made. I think the consistency. <laughs> I agree. Pretty, I made it. Yeah, I give it a thumbs the up. The consistency <laughs> was pretty good. You know it's not super thick. Um, mm. blended well. I think you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go into detail why I like it. Not too much overwhelming amount of cinnamon. Just enough no. to keep enough to keep it like like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, yeah, thumbs up. Yeah, good. That was a good one. Yeah, Cheers to you guys, man. He, he, <laughs> he took all his ingredients from the bar. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. I wish I had the ingredients. Uh, yeah, I'm here to work. No, I'm not here to work. Let me just take you all You know what? I, honestly, I would love to sell patties at my bar. But pe people say, prefer to drink Jameson. Jameson. Yeah. What are you going to do? Is, is, it, is there like a law against selling coquito at your bar? No. Hmm? You have to sell. You can't sell homemade stuff. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you yeah. can't? No. You know? I'm not selling that shit anyway. I drink it. I make this for my family and my friends for us to enjoy. Which we are doing right I now. I don't need to sell it at the bar. Because yeah. you know what? Honestly, around the holidays, everybody has it. So it's like, cabrones, we got coquito. Yeah, you have. You have. <laughs> <laughs> the CC. Cabrones, coquito. Yeah. Aquí. That's it. That's yeah, like. I, does this bar specialize in coquitos? It's still, it's like, still, yeah, it's, yeah. You know what? It's a delicious It's a delicious cocktail that should be served all year round, but it'd be weird in the summer. Because well, it's, it's too hot. It's too hot. It's too hot. And you walk into a place that's ice cold and air conditioned, like a movie theater, you could probably get away I'm with it. I'm amazed with how many people I see that sell it and how many people still need it. Well, how many people that make money it, off of no, it? No, but it bugs me out. And then new people b make it if and they, they make money off of it If some too. of these people just Googled how to make it, You'd be surprised. Yeah, but it's simple. Yes, but some people don't want to go to the whole. There's different. There's huh. different process. Yeah, I don't want to go to the supermarket and go down the Goya aisle. 
That's what that's what it is. These white people. I can't go down the international aisle. Everybody is gonna look at me weird. Well, that one, the whiskey came out, and that that sip right yeah, there, the whiskey looking, popped out. I'm looking for that white lead shade that you put in the cocoa yeah. drink. <laughs> oh, I love that shit. Uh, Yo, you know they have those bombs at uh, Trader Joe's. You ever have those? The ch- the white chocolate bombs and the white um. Oh, they're so good. It's like it's like super milky chocolate. Mm. It's not like chocolate chocolate. It's like milky milky cho- Bro, you drop them in your like hot chocolate or your coffee. And then they break Ooh, apart. And they just, melt. Mm. And it just becomes like, dude, it's like liquid treasure. It's fucking amazing. Well, so, liquid, yeah. Liquid treasure. <laughs> this is a liquid treasure right yeah, here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big, uh, I'm not a big like sweets guy. But lately, I man, it's I get older and, you know, and... All of a sudden, I'm like an apple pie. I had the best dessert I've ever had in my entire life. Mm-hmm. At my girlfriend took me for uh, Patricia took me for uh, my birthday dinner at a place called um, Dinner Bar Grazzi. It's uh, in Massapequa Park. Okay, on Sunrise Highway. Highly recommend it for anybody listening right now. If like all five of you guys, <laughs> this place is freaking amazing. It's it's a it's a American. It's an American, Italian, and Cantina Mexican fusion place. Okay. Which is like completely interesting. But if you think about it, like all the types of food that they sell are just uh, like the, the Cantina portion, which is like just tacos. And they have like these amazing freaking tacos, bro. Because they do like in, the, the, the ingredients would be Italian or fried chicken, you know, like weird, you know, okay. or, or little out of the box kind of stuff. Delicious. Really good. So we went, we got this amazing gigantic margarita, and we got pizza, and we got all these you just go order appetizers and you could try try everything there, you know? So all of a sudden, um I you know, I'm not a big a dessert guy, but it's like it's your birthday, you gotta get dessert. See if like, it, you have to. You, you have, have to know, get you dessert, have it's your to, birthday. Have to. So I'm like, okay. And I see this thing and I'm like, and I've always loved apple pie. I'm a I'm an apple pie guy. Just I love apples. I don't know. I just like apple pie. So anyway fucking come out with this mason jar and they drizzle the inside with caramel mm-hmm. and a little chocolate and then they jam apple pie and vanilla bean ice cream and they just mush it all together and they like jam it into this mason jar and then they fill it with top with whipped cream and more caramel and chocolate Ooh. dude it it was Easily the best thing I've ever had oh, in my nice. entire life. Sounds nice. Because it was just every spoon you had everything. You yeah. know what I'm saying? We yeah we went to uh, it's a rooftop <clears throat> uh, hotel, the refinery, and their dessert was in a mason jar. And there's a picture I had put up. It's me making a face after, but it legit was a face of like, oh, oh my god, Dude, it this was is, incredible. This I told is so I said good. I told I told Trish I was like, I will come back here just for the just dessert. for that because it, it was that good. Mm-hmm. And I've never had that reaction from a dessert. Like I've had flan that I've that I've absolutely loved. I've had like certain desserts where I'm like, damn, this is really good, you know? That shit made me stop in my tracks. Mm. And it made me rethink my whole dessert. I like I think you know, because your body grows, like you said, you had a you had a almost died the other day from eating cashew nuts. <laughs> your body which is, regrows. It's not funny, but now I'm allergic it's, to cashews. It's crazy. Yeah. But you know, your body regrows all your organs and everything regrow themselves, you know, regeneration. And you develop new allergies and you lose old allergies. You know what happens. So your tastes change, I think. You know, a lot of people, you notice when you get older, your taste buds are a little bit different and you're liking certain things that you would never think. Right. See, my, my thing though, Mike, I've always liked a lot. Like there's very few things I didn't like. Like very few things. So when I say I wasn't a dessert guy, I just didn't prefer it. Like, you know. I, it wasn't that but I didn't like some, it. Like, like sweets wise, a, a, a Cinnabon gave you stuff my face. I fucking Cinnab- love a Cinnabon. Bun. Cinnabon. Cinnabon. Oh yeah, no, the mole shit. Okay. Next to Auntie Annie, yeah, yeah. and then yeah, I'll yeah, go to Auntie Annie. That's I different. I get one of those too. That's different. Oh, <laughs> the salt and the sweet. I, so I loved it. Sh- yeah. I just, I guess maybe it was more that I could control myself. You know right. what I'm saying? Do you know what I? And can't, I was always skinny then, and now I I'm can't, a fat bastard. I eat everything in sight. Well, I mean, fat minus the bastard. You're just okay. Oh, thanks. You're okay. That was sweet. So I'm just fat. <laughs> I'm not a bastard. I'm fat. Actually, I am a bastard because my mother wasn't married when I was born. Yeah. So technically, by by the fundamental, I mean technically, by the fundamental definition of bastard, by, I am also I'm a bastard. I'm fat and I'm a bastard. I'm not, but I am a bastard child. Yes. I was a bastard child. Uh, and I'm fat. But my I'm, weakness, I'm losing my, I'm losing it again. Though. My like, weakness is ice cream. Yeah. I can't like. First of all, when you buy a pint, 
I don't see any reason why you shouldn't eat the whole thing right there. A pint is not enough ice cream to leave some left over. You don't eat half of it. You don't leave a quarter I of agree. it. I agree. And you know, it's funny that you say that. So we were uh, food shopping tonight. And um, we had to cancel Christmas because, you know, fucking this stupid Omicron is like wrecking through everybody, ruining yeah. people's holidays. But it's, you know, and it's, it's, I mean, listen, like we said, we're very, we're very, um, like, I think we're very uh, happy and, and grateful that, you know, nobody's really dying from it. The, right. Like, people are getting sick and it's a cold. Well, God. they're showing down at the, like, the, but, you know, the researchers and... When your holidays are ruined, I mean, this is, right. maybe, this has been going on for two and a half but years. That's right. But, you know, you could do something with it. You still do hey, something I'm with just it. saying, it's it still sucks, dude. Yeah. Listen, the fact that you have a holiday and you want to see your family. My son's birthday was yesterday. He tested positive today. So... He basically probably, you know, he was he wasn't feeling good on his birthday. So he, you know, it sucks when you have you're looking forward like for us it's a great time of year because we celebrate his birthday, two days, three days later is Christmas, but we do Christmas Eve. So it's kind of one thing for us. And um we don't get to do that this year. And it's bad. You know, yeah. I don't it's you know, my son's, you know, twenty two yesterday. So it's you know, he's got a busy life. We don't get to see each other as much. So all I'm saying is for everybody. It's it sucks. It's not you know it it's it's a it's a it's a fact of life that you got to get tested. You don't want to spread it, so you don't go. So a lot of people I know are canceling Christmas. It wasn't you know. Yeah, yeah, we're not yeah we're not going anywhere. There's to be cost just for you know. You don't want to get any fears and and those people around you that show up to work when they uh, shouldn't, and they bring that sickness with them, and then they're getting tested to. Uh, uh, to check out, you know, waiting for their results on it. So it's a, it's a pain in the ass at the, the same time. But yeah, two years deep, <laughs> two years deep in COVID mess. So yeah, two years deep. On a sports note, how's about us getting our manager, huh? Bucky, don't give a show, Walter. Bucky, definitely don't give a. I I tell you one thing. I'm like ex- super excited with. Um, the, the basically the, the the direction this team is heading in, you know, for every like, it's funny how people are, especially Yankee fans. They troll bastards, and I hate them all because they like you know what oh, they, they, they like them. to kick. They're they like trolls. to kick you because of the the They're history. Trolls. They're of, just uh, so stupid. And if you're a Yankee fan and you're listening and you're not one of those people, I love you. There are a few of them that I really like. Chris Ryan is a great Yankee fan. He doesn't break any balls. Um. Uh, Joey Milano is a great fan. Like these guys are fans um, that don't hate. And I listen. I've had my moments of hating on the Yankees, but it's because of the fans, you know. So the only people that are hating on this are Yankee fans that are like, "Well, he never won anything." And I'm like, dude, as I remember those days when Buck was the manager, and when he got fired, every single person, not one thought that it was okay not one but he got do you remember what the freaking newspaper said the next day when they hired joe torre do you remember what the headline clueless was joe. clueless joe yeah so, because he had failed and everything else he look he joe was a good player turns out he got maybe got better as a manager well, yeah, i mean he didn't really have to do anything because, but he, yeah but, he walked into a championship correct which he is great in. i'm not i'm not taking anything away from torre but what i'm saying is you know like that's their that's their that's their way of trolling us going buck never won anything you had the most psychotic jerk off owners in history in George Steinbrenner, right. which I love. The least, the least patient. Because of his passion. Right. He, I love. He I only love. wanted to win, and right. he wanted to. And be I the love best that about him. You know, it's. Also, I was never one of those guys that, and I'm, you weren't either. We were never one of those guys where, oh, they buy the team. I'm like, I wish my owner would buy the team. No, because like the, it's, it was annoying to watch, and we couldn't do it. Think about this, like. Uh, being in New York, right? And I'm in Chicago and like having two teams uh, in, in, in one in the American League and one in right. the National League. Like anytime you want to, you can go to see the Blue Jays come to town right. or the Astros. You can watch any team. Say, much. Any yeah. team you want. Because you have the benefit of having two teams. Of having yeah. two teams. Right. You can go and you can see that. Now when the Yankees are doing good and I've been to, I've been to tons of Yankee games, we, we, whether they were good and bad. And it was always like, I know, it's funny because I know, I like baseball, so I know more about the history than some of these Yankee fans do. Right. But I'm not debating that. It's just like the value of it. You, the, the people go, I don't know who the guy was in 1975 or 1985, but I know we have 27 rings, 27 rings, 27. Then you go, just because of that aspect, you look at Yankee fans, you're like, yo, I hate you. Right. I hate you. And I don't hate anything. 
And I reserve right. that for I, like that, for shitty a good, people. That's a very good point. I mean, I hate baked beans, and spinach, and Yankee fans. Yeah, I mean, think about that. And the like spinach and the is good for I hate you. The brains. Beans aren't that bad. See, but, but I love Yankee, Yankee fans because they're my family. My brother, I love my brother. He's my brother. I love him. He's my. He's a Yankee fan though. He, you so said I hate it, him. Being it's a like you fan. said it three times to Ryan, convince look, yourself. Ryan with Lorenzo, <laughs> you know, arguably my, you know, one of my best friends in life. Like with you, you, Larry, a couple other guys are like my best friends in my life. Larry's a diehard Yankee fan. Yeah, fucking can't stand that part about him. About him. <laughs> but every other part, I'll jump in front of a train for that yeah. dude. You know what I'm saying? The minute he puts so the Yankee a, shirt on, you're like, yeah. no, nah, this train's gonna hit no, you, but you know what it's gonna hit it's you. Just, I can't do anything the, about it's that. It's the dynamic of how passionate we are as fans, but how we can live with each other and love each other and still be like, I fucking hate you. Well, look, <laughs> right, like the 2000. I know. Stop cursing. Sorry. I didn't say anything. Look, the 2000. <laughs> The 2000 you know, World Series. It's, it's applicable in some spots. It is. <laughs> that you can. That you can use it. That's that's a fact. Very definitive. Game one, 2000 World Series, yes. right? Uh, we all go to Pennant Fever. Right. Now, when, when I first walk in, I think I told the story. It was me and there was like two other Met fans. And it was like a group. It was like six Yankee fans. They weren't from there, but they, that's where they came in. And they, they were talking junk before, like the first half hour, 45 minutes before anybody showed up. I was there early because Rich asked me if I could help out. Right. So I went in there and I'm helping out with doing our thing. Rest in peace, Richie the animal. Richie the animal. Uh, so they start talking junk. And I was like, look, I'm just going to tell you this. I said, when my people show up, you're probably going to be watching in the back room. So just take a look at what it looks like. <laughs> and they were like, yeah, whatever, whatever. You t- came in fives and tens and 20. And that's all of downtown Flushing. That's Franklin, Ash Avenue, 22, 41st. That's where everybody You went. name it. And everybody split line to line. Met fan, Yank fan. Yeah, Yo, yeah. those dudes are in the back. I walked in the back and I was like, hey, guys, I guys, you want something from the drink? I'm helping out right now to serve them. And they were like, Yo, they're just like, fuck you. Like, excuse me. Get that. away from us. Yeah, yo, they were just so <laughs> annoyed. It's crazy. I told you what was going to happen. But so this game. But that's what makes New York. I mean, but that exists fr- in a but, few cities. But our friends. But our, yes, yes, in a few. But like, but it was just so that whole bar was just the people that we know. Right. One line of Met fans, one line of Yankee but, fans. You know what I'm saying? When I'm the like, game was that over. That doesn't exist in Chicago. Right. But when the game was over, when the game was over, it wasn't who won or lost. It was like who won shots. Or who wants this? I'll get you your beer. You know, like, while the game's going on, you're not friends. But while when the game's over, it was like, let's go back right. to being normal. In Chicago, they don't do that because there was such animosity. L.A., I don't think they... I mean, in LA, no, LA... L.A., San Francisco, Dodger, San no, Francisco. No, but you know what it is, though? This is the difference. And they're and in I'm the same you, division, gonna, and they I'm, hate each other. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you the difference. Geographically, they're 300 miles apart. Yeah. So you don't... You know what I'm saying? Like, Yankees and Met fans live in the same house. You know what I'm saying? It's different. We are in the same communities. We are in the same neighborhood, same city. We share the city. Chicago is the same way. They share the city. But they don't have that hatred amongst each other because the Chicago White Sox, frankly, don't have... The Mets haven't won a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. But the Chicago Chicago, Chicago White Sox have zero history at all. Apparently, we have a phone call. We're going to go to the phone lines and see what we got going on here. Hello, caller. What's going on? what we got going on. It sounds what like Sluggito. It, it sounds like Sluggito when he was about five years old with the stuff he knows that I got, bro. Yo, what's <laughs> up, my brother? How you feeling, my man? Man, I'm feeling all right, man. I'm just congested. I, I, I was telling Mike earlier, man, first of all, I want to apologize for not being there in the studio and missing the Blanquito and the Choquito and all those things. <laughs> <laughs> sounds so different when you say it. And, 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 it's, and, and I'm home like a pendejito. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, bro. You know, obviously, it's all about the health and the health and, and uh, well being of of everybody. So you don't worry about that at all, my man. We obviously yeah, miss man. you. I, I was like, you know what? I, I was like, you know, I, I know I'm okay. I don't got that Omicron Transformer Planet Part yep. Three shit. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's for the Decepticons, know, not yeah, the Autobots. Yeah, seriously. When Megatron <laughs> comes, we're in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta start blowing things up. Yeah, we just gotta stay away from that. So, other other than the cold, everything okay in in uh, in life? How's everything going? Everything's great, man. I can't complain, bro. You know, just I'm I'm doing great things, keeping busy. You know, just uh, you know, right now I'm actually trying to record my show believe it or not man and it sounds it just sounds so funny that i might just not even record it and just say the hell with it <laughs> yeah i mean it did, you know i i two weeks ago um we you know we with three weeks ago but almost a month ago yeah. we had our first show our first show um we yeah. want to revisit that moment and that literally the the day before it was it was literally the wednesday before our second show and i 
I same thing. My na- like nasally, and I couldn't stop sneezing. Are, are you sneezing and coughing at all? I'm just sneezing, bro. I, but uh, you know, I told Mike before. I said I just suffer from sinuses. So like, even right? Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, yeah. I just hate it. It makes it so much worse, right? It's like I couldn't breathe at all. Oh man, I was breathing through my mouth for two weeks. It was the worst, dude. That's the worst part. Well, I, when, yeah. when you when you sleep, when he he sleeps, yeah, I can't breathe. He can't he, breathe, yeah. and he's just oh, through his no. mouth. You know and what he it just is? Snores. I'm allergic. I'm allergic. To, it's the weirdest shit. I'm allergic to dust mites. So every freaking pillow, oh, you know, you no matter what, you could have a brand new pillow. It's got dust mites. It doesn't matter. So yeah. I literally sleep with my allergies wrapped around my face every night. It's brutal, dude. <laughs> I wake up and it takes me like twenty minutes, you know, maybe an hour sometimes to just to get my like bearing. It sucks, man. But I had that same cold for like two weeks, and that's why I didn't want to come yeah. in the show. First of all, I didn't want to get anybody sick. Right. Obviously. I didn't well, that's get... a good one, right? Yeah, I mean, that's that the my, first that and foremost, person, yeah. right? Exactly. Right, right. But the second thing was. I sounded like shit. You know what I mean? And like, and you know, yeah. who the hell wants to? But just co- hearing it will make somebody be like, "Oh, you're right." Like, yeah. And look at the way people look at people who not, cough now. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, you know? like, like, like you get looked at differently now, man. It's like I literally felt like my, you know, like a leper. You know, I had a cold. I, I didn't, yo, I slug. I swear, I didn't leave my house for ten days, right? Except to go shopping twice, just to get food. But I never felt sick, man. The only thing I was doing was sneezing and coughing at a ridiculous yeah, rate. That's, that's, that's All I get is this, I get sneezing, right? I get the sneezing, I get the stuffy nose and a sinus headache. No, but see, I, yeah, sinus headaches from from like too much of the coughing. And right. Important. Well, just when you can't yeah. breathe, that 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 solidness. But I had no body like, aches. I kept my appetite no the whole fever, time. No right, fever, no. nothing. I yeah. felt like I could like play golf yeah. every day. I actually did play golf twice. Yeah. It was really nice. Out. Yeah. Those were two days I left. Yeah. It was like sixty that's, degrees, and I went exactly and played golf. What happens, man. Yeah, but that's the, exactly what you feel. Like I, I don't, you know, I don't get fevers, I don't get body aches, I don't get shit. Dude. It's just you wake up stuffy, and then you get the sinus. I get the sinus pressure, bro. I could actually breathe through my nose right now, like no problem. Right. But it's not there. It's, it's the it's the sinus cavities that are all messed up. So like I feel congested like crazy. But yet I could breathe in and I'm good, you know what I mean? But it's just a crazy sinus feeling. Just, like, and, no, I, and, you, and it's just enough for everybody to look at you like you're a leper. Yeah. Just yeah. enough. Yeah, look, man, like, like, look at him. Know. He's got the Omnicron. Leper, leprechaun. <laughs> he's, a, he's, he's a leprechaun. <laughs> he's a leprechaun. <laughs> I'm a Look at him. And I'm making coquito. Yeah, I drink. Uh, no, let me tell you something. You're missing this blanquito, bro. Oh, my oh, gosh. Man, listen, what, what, I, what I told Mike that we got to do is that we got to reschedule, and I don't care if it's not even Christmas, but it's still New Year's, and guess what? Puerto Rican celebrate three kings day. With listen, bro, I still got all the ingredients left in my house, bro. Yeah, there's, there's, been, there's New Year's. Make it, <laughs> making another batch is really easy for yeah, me. Yeah, it's not a problem. I, well, listen, man, I, 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 I want you to do that because I know, you know, down with it, I know I'm going to be all right by next week, so I'm, I'm in there next week in the studio. And I'm bringing some for people. Oh, uh, here we go. See, it. yeah. So our pre-New Year's episode will bring from from just voice to physically bringing Johnny Juan Salgado. Well, listen, honestly, you That's know what? Good, I can tell you this though. Just be be careful because if it's the cold I had, that shit was two weeks. <laughs> it sucked, yeah. man. I swear to God, it sucked. I was like, I couldn't believe it. I was like, how long you know is what? this I'll, damn thing I'll lasting? Know, I'll know. To make it this way, I'll know for sure because usually I'm pretty, I'm all right when it comes to, you know, one thing, let me tell you something. One good thing about, you know, wearing masks and all that stuff is that I, I haven't had a real bad cold in two years. Like, right, I really same here. Had, you know, you, you're not only fighting whatever's out there, but, you know, the common cold, the common allergies. All the that frequency stuff. of that, though. That's why I laugh at stupid yeah. people that say masks don't work. I'm like. What are you dumb? Yeah, we like, wiped I mean, out the flu in America. Not, it may yeah, it may not stop the coronavirus one hundred percent, but it works. But we wiped out the <laughs> flu. Works. I mean, how does it know? Like that's yeah. a, those are we you know when we when we talk about a stupid though, like you know like the, we <laughs> let me ask you a question. We got you we got you for a few minutes on the phone, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, good, good, because I wanted to get into the whole estupido uh, movement. Well, let's see. Let's, well, I just want to say this: like, what's crazy, right? Like, they wear masks, they protest it, right? For nine months, they yeah. do a survey. There was one flu case in America. <laughs> they treated that. They wiped out the flu. Well, can we? I mean, it's also people staying home. Let's yeah. not. Let's yes, let's but, get it right. Yeah, but, but not right, a lot of right. people. You're I was right. like, like mask definitely stopped that shit. But when you got to June, July, yeah. August, it was confirmed for the second time that there were no, no flu. flu cases, yeah. and the population right. in New York was secluded, but everywhere else it was running around. You know what I said? Look, and the, yeah. the, the best way to yeah. the, like the best analogy you could use about masks. Obviously, nothing is foolproof. So when people are arguing, they're going to make any statement they can to like support the argument. That's just the way it works. So you're going to say well, they join the argument. You're going to say it doesn't work. You're saying it because it can't definitively ever stop 
the coronavirus. So that's like saying, right. you know, that's like saying a tablecloth doesn't work for protecting your table. So then you're not yeah. going to ever use a tablecloth. You know what I'm saying? You just pour the gravy right on top of the freaking wood. So my oh, point is, it. when you have a tablecloth and the gravy pours on the wood, a little bit of that liquid will get through to the, to the wood. You pick the tablecloth, you yeah. throw it in the laundry, you wipe the thing on, it's gone. That's my point. So it does work. Yeah. It just, yeah. nothing in life yeah. is foolproof, you know? So that's, the, you know, when, when we get to the, the stupid thinking of people, and listen, this goes both ways. Because those yeah. are the those are the people that are the you know like the whole uh, COVID is a um, farce you know dummies and then you have like remember it's a farce oh, dummies this, yeah this is <laughs> this is just a big you know it's a big uh, it's a big joke it's not doesn't well, I work with a guy that was called, he kept calling it propaganda propaganda it's ridiculous it was called, it's like propaganda so now but then you have also the psychos on the other side that are forcing people to get. Right, but, don't, yeah. right and so, I, <laughs> but then you see those people like, you're not vaccinated? Yeah. You're not right. vaccinated? Like, all right, exactly. slow down. It's so just, the, that's the whole as stupid though of the country. Like, yeah. like because we're yeah, honestly, yeah. we're being dominated by dumb. Um, and it's really, it's scary. You know, the, and the people that are in charge. Look, the, way I, the way I look at it, man, is like, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm vaccinated, right? Me. I use my mask. Hey, if I go into a store and somebody's not using a mask, well, I got my mask on. I'm vaccinated. I shouldn't worry about that person. Let that person worry about himself. I don't think he's going to spread it in the sense because if everybody else has got a mask on, then it's like it's almost like, all right, well, I'm protected. I don't know about you. It's like you wear a condom, you don't wear a condom. You don't wear a condom, you're probably Yeah, but you know what you're doing? You know what you're doing right now? You're being logical, and that's scary. To, yeah, don't to do leadership. that. Don't do that. Because when you're logical, don't then, do that. The leadership get the leadership gets scary, dude. They they're scared. Of, now, what happened? Because they're gonna shut down this show because look, of logic. Look, look at how much sense you're making. And sense. If vaccines worked. <laughs> then you really shouldn't worry about getting sick. So, like, in other words, if they really, really, really worked, you know, if they, and, and I'm not saying they don't. Vax, I'm not an anti-vaxxer right. in, by right. any stretch of the imagination. What I am right. is an anti-force person. Like, I, you yeah, course, making people course. do anything that that's, they're not for, it, you know, that, that bothers me. You know, when you threaten somebody's yeah. livelihood, that bothers me a lot. And um, yeah, yeah. I actually recently just posted something that I really, I would love to read if, if it's So, okay. Johnny, how's the show going? The show's going good, man. The show's going good. I actually, um, I actually, not too long ago, I did something that hasn't been done before, and it was that I don't know if you, well, you guys seen it. I posted it somewhere. It was a, a cool interview with Jay Balvin, and um, it was actually something different. Uh, you know, Sirius XM is united with Pandora. We're together, right? And this was a Pandora event, and so Pandora reached out to me to do this event. And I was like, yeah, you know, they knew of my relationship with Dave Dalton already. They knew, you know, that I've seen him many times, that he's a big fan of me. You know, I'm, he looks at me like like I'm one of his idols, you know. So they knew all of this stuff. So they called me and I said, yeah, let's do it. Dude, I, I honestly thought it was just a regular interview. You know, go in there, do an interview, knock it out. You know, camera here, camera there, and that's cool. Dude, these, these guys went above and beyond. I don't know if you've seen it. I got to find a link and post it on my Facebook page so you guys can just see the I, I can tell you one thing. Like... This, you know, I worked in TV for a while. That set design and all of that shit, that was like top of it. Looked, it, it looked was, crazy, dude. It was, it was ridiculous. It was crazy. I mean, they, just, just their staff alone, there must have been at least 100 people on the staff alone. Yeah. Wow. I mean, look, again, when you're in the business, you realize how much time and effort goes into a set like that. Dude, that, dude, it looked, you know what it looked like? Like, who wants to be a millionaire set? Like, crazy, like neon. Like, it was, it it was, was sick. It was sick. That's exactly yeah. what it was like. So, so they did that. And and it, it was the biggest thing they've done so far that there's no way they can go back now and do something smaller. They they still do uh, you know series of in Pandora. They still do events like in the Apollo. That's the that's the place where we kind of do whenever an artist is going to have like a channel for their own for like a month or whatever it is. They always do a performance there. A oh nice subscribers only, and it's a really big deal. Like, and like yeah, you said, they can only go forward. They can't go backwards. That's what that's a great yeah, thing. Yeah, no, that's they awesome. Can't go back, so. Yo, I had, can I ask you a question? I got a bunch of calls, yeah. So since, you know, that's all good news, and we love that. for That that interview was amazing, and we love that your professional life is going great. How the hell do you feel about Buck, baby? Talking about oh, Buck, man. baby. Listen, bro, let me talk about Buck. I, you know, <laughs> I knew you wanted to. That's why I had to do that. Just, just, just how Buck said, you know, he was in great company because, you know, uh, Strider, Sp whatever his name is, Strider, Strider, uh, and, and Kataro, those guys, all three of those guys, I would have been, I would have been all right. Highly regarded. Them. All three of those guys are, um, all of them. Kintaro is, is, is one of, like, of, of the three he spoke, they love him. Um, Joe yeah. Spot has been around yeah. for a bit, but the, you're right. All three of them are very, very I, highly regarded. But I think also with I Buck, just, like I the fact, think, go ahead, sorry, go ahead. I just, 
Yeah, no, I just think that when, when you sign a guy like Buck, it just right away you just get crazy credibility. Instant credibility. Crazy. I agree 100%. It's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like everybody's looking at even Yankee. I talked to Yankee fans who were like, dude, like, what the fuck? Like, my team ain't doing shit. Uh, and I tell them, I'm like, look, man, you know, give it time. You guys are going to do a lot of trades when the lockout is over. You're going to make a lot of good trades. You don't. You didn't have to spend the money we did because we weren't as close to you right. like we want to be. No, they're a lot closer than we are. Maybe not anymore, but the Yankees didn't. The Yankees are panicking now, though, because all the guys they wanted on their wish list are gone. Pretty much, yeah. Except Chris Bryant, Bryant. they could they could still go push for. Yeah, they but didn't it, even it, really want Bryant. Look, if you look, if they went after Bryant, if they were throwing money at Bryant, that means that two big right-handed bats are expendable, and you don't know which ones why, they are. But that's why maybe they really Sanchez, want and you can't get rid of Stanton because you got thirty-five million dollars, and nobody's well, the touching pro- that. The pro- yeah. Listen, the problem yeah. with the Bryant doesn't fit there. Within. No, not at that's all. Around. But they, the guys they wanted are all gone. So that what what I, I what I'm grateful for, I think that we the the benefit we have is we're starting from scratch. And I mean that in a sense of the managerial position. This guy's been yeah. around for so long. Like, people want to talk about his win-loss record, which is, you know, he's only a little bit above 500. Yeah, but I got something better than that. Before you go, he's 65 years young, okay? Not only right. did he right. take – coach. listen, he managed in the minor leagues. Three-time manager the Yan- of the year. Yes, but in the Yankees, right, the, the, down there, came up there with all those players and those pros, right? So, yeah, he gets fired. He was and their they, guy, yeah. And Arizona, they gave him the job three years before they became a franchise. He built yep. that Took team. Took that team to a freaking playoff dude. Right. They win Which, the World <laughs> Series after him, right? So, just those – forget How about do, do that? Like, forget about everything else. Just right. those two alone, you have to understand that, one – He's in with the young players and with the and Rangers the and the ball. He did a good job with Baltimore. Yes, he did a great Bal- job with the Rangers. Baltimore's got the worst owner in baseball who sticks his nose in everything. Yeah. And so did the Yankees at the time. And listen, not the Beth- same way. No, 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 Angelos no, no. is, is, no, is garbage. Sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I, I Angelos is not a I good owner. Fan. I'm going to backtrack. I didn't mean that. I meant best worst as a manager. Like if you're a manager, Peter Angelos is not the guy you want to be your and, owner. And, and, and Steinbrenner his nose in wasn't your- either. And that's my point. Yeah. Steinbrenner yeah. fired some great people. Because he was an overreactive, free, you know, maniac. They, yeah. We Look all know. When he fired Pinella, then hired Pinella, then fired, right then fired Billy Martin, then hired matter. Billy Martin. I'll tell you right now, firing Buck was probably the worst fire he did. That was probably of all the firings. Over oh, the did. Billy Martin was yeah. a really he good fired man. Billy Martin, Billy Martin twice. Twice. Like, Three he fired Billy Martin like on during the game. Yeah, he fired <laughs> Billy Martin on a phone during call the game, yeah. in the middle of the dug Call, yeah. in the dugout. <laughs> call the, 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 you're fired. Yeah. yeah. So the, the guy was a maniac. Like that's my point. So you can't the whole the idea. What I'm trying to point bring up to the haters because there's so many of them out there. Oh, Buck yeah. is only a 500 winner. Yeah, but Buck took the Yankees over when the Yankees were losing 90 games a year. Well, you know they were they were always like like formidable when Buck took all them over. They had one star. They had Mattingly. That's pretty much all they had. Yes, Mattingly was at the end yeah. of his career because he was always hurt. That was hurt. the two or three year bridge to ninety four. Before I'll that tell team you, was awful, bro. But I'll tell you something funny about that squad. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I can't go. I don't remember every single one. I have to go because they were changing players. Danny Tartable. <laughs> yeah, but look, Tartable was a start. Jesse Barfield I'm, I'm was overpaid. Jesse Barfield, Danny Tartable, Here's one for Steve you. Balboni. Re- these guys, these Re- guys. Yeah, were but those were before. The, a little before, before. Buck took over right then. He was in the yes. minor leagues with them. But here's the thing. Um, Roberto Kelly, right? Yeah. Was considered a five tool guy. Another, yep. Right? But he was not, a, he would maybe have five tools, he but they weren't miss. the best tools. He was a miss. He was a good ball player. They turned Roberto Kelly into Paul O'Neill, who became one of the most clutch well, that, but, but what I'm saying hitters is Buck, and the greatest Buck defense. was part of all of that. Right. But I'm saying returning Re- Roberto Kelly into uh, Paul O'Neill. Bringing in Mark Tashara, Tish- bringing in, not Tashara, bringing in um, Tino. Uh, Tino Martinez. But, and here, because, because you know, Martino, right? yes, because they, they over they overpaid for him. Oh, so actually, that you some know what? Seattle I stand corrected. No, I stand corrected. Buck wasn't part of that. Tory was already here for that. So when Tory got here that yeah. year, right? The year before is when they made the playoffs for the first time. Right. Mattingly. And Tino smoked them. And they no, fired no, 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 no. Buck. Mattingly, uh, Tino wasn't there. Mattingly was the first baseman against the Mariners. No, I'm talking and, about the Mariners smoked us. Right. And the next, the, you not said us. Oh my God, I said us. <laughs> He's the Yankee New fan York, in the closet. Yeah, totally not. A so Yankee they man. fired him after going to the playoffs and losing to to Seattle. Right, right. So they bring in Tory, but they had already made the trade for O'Neill for Tino. No, they signed Tino. He was they, a free agent. Oh, they, they he was a free agent. Now I'm just going over the roster because you're I know right, the '96 right, right, right. the Yankees well. I just remember Buck leaving and that that whole regime. They got they got it like you said. Tino came in. They had um. 
They signed Clemens. Clemens came down. Well, no, no, no. Not yet. That was a year not, later. That was two years later because well, they traded Wells right. for Clem- Clemens. Clemens went to Toronto and had two Cy right. Young years in a row. Right, That's right, right. the steroid year. But they had, essentially, they had all the parts in place well, for them where, to make a few yes, tweaks. Yes, I just would say, to like, so the best team their ever. outfield went Tim Raines, right? right? right Tim Bernie Raines, Williams yep, was yep. growing up there. Baby. They traded. They brought in O'Neal. At third, they had Wade Boggs. At short, they had... Um, um, but Boggs was was Boggs on that original team with yeah, Buck? No. He wasn't with Buck. No, he was in yeah, he, he traded was with him. He was in 95, 94, 95, 96. Was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, in actually, yeah. Boggs and Charlie Hayes they brought in. Charlie Hayes, right. Charlie Hayes they brought in after. The shortstop was Tony Fernandez. He dislocated his elbow. They brought up Derek Jeter because they had no one else. So the rookie gets the starting nod at short in 96. Mariano Duncan was the 200 switch hitter, switched to going just batting right-handed. He bats 300. Yeah. All right, they bring in that Joe guy, yeah, Girardi. He, he was, God. They, they signed Tino Martinez. They had Jimmy Key. They had um, um, Jimmy Key was a stud for them the, the, the two years prior I'm to that. To, who was their other starter that year? They had... Um, Dude, basically, they were, they, were, they were what the Mets were right now. Yeah, you yeah, know what? So that's, that's what I mean. That's, that's, like, that's a really good point. That's a great point. Because there's so many points. I think that, well, I think that, that, yeah, I think what Mike was trying to say and what I was trying to say in a long-winded way was the pieces were there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in, in place. And once they were all put together, a couple of trades and you're you're the, one of the best teams in history. Like, But I'm not, listen, yeah. by far not saying that that's what's going to happen to the Mets. I'm just saying that Buck was, was part of that process. He watched the yeah. whole Yankee team go from a really bad team to a really one of the best teams of all time. Made didn't make the, the you know the fact that he didn't make a playoff with that team. Well, they, they didn't win it. They, they made didn't win it. it but they, they, didn't win the, they won. They won in the first year. They they won the first year. Get fired. He gets fired after first year playoffs. First year. Yeah. You know you're yeah. talking about no confidence in a guy who was there for three years and you fire him the first year. But he was play. also in the he was in the Yankee system in for this, eighteen for, for a years. long time. Yeah, eighteen he years. Was, right. So player, coach, the way we manager. don't look at it. Right. The way we don't look at it is that George Steinbrenner knew him from being. Part of that, yeah, right. I see, and I, that's something I didn't realize either until I saw when he got. Do you know that? He, do you know something else? You want to hear something? Because it, it's different, and the relationship's different with the owner when you're there for that long. Right. Bobby, we Cox. look at him as a manager for three years. Bobby like, Cox considered one of the one of the top managers in modern history, right? right? Because of his Atlanta squads, right? That dude started out as a second baseman in the Yankee system. He was in his twenties, and they were, he was blocked by like two studs, and he was an okay guy. They were, they convinced him to go into coaching, and ma- he was managing in the Yankee system by the time he was 30, 30, like 35 or something like that. So the same thing with, uh, like, Showalter. Like, he was a player that always was only going so far. Right, and who's going to manage And anyway. the transition was right, right away, away to, ba- to, to coaching and then managing. I think it's different when you see, you know, I, I guess because a lot of people can hear what I'm saying and say, oh, you know, well, what about, like, you're not giving three years to Terry or to, to you know, um, to uh, Mickey or to, like, you know. First of all, I thought, honestly, I thought Mickey Calloway, wasn't as bad as people thought. No, I mean, but I think he was overmatched went, in a lot of he areas. Wind, he was, and he wound up being a creep, but um, he wasn't. <laughs> there's that part. Which is crazy, but, like, I don't think he was as bad as people blamed him for. Right. Because, but, yeah. but, but when you have, like, when you looked at other guys, I think they were completely, like, you know, obviously, you know, Louie was totally in over his head. You need stability. And a guy like Buck brings that because he yeah. did it for so long, and he's done it with so many, like, big-time players. He's had... The, some of the biggest superstars in the world play for him, and all yep. of them respect him. There's not one. Well, and Adam Jones, Matado, all those guys are talking about. Oh, I mean, ball. yeah, he co- he coached a lot. You know, he coached a lot of great players, and he. Yeah. yeah, but I saw something where somebody was like, "Oh, now that we have Buck, and if Machado is a uh, you know frees That's up his ridiculous. contract, yeah, but even if he did, you know, he's a he's a bad clubhouse guy. But Machado's not. Machado's not. He's a bad clubhouse guy. Listen, like you, you. We complain about Strowman. This is being what a bad I hate about New York. Guy. They'll come up. Any story will have legs when somebody puts it out because right. it's so stupid. Machado, first of all, yeah. he's an aging third baseman that we don't need. We got a, a young, legit stud, superstar yeah. coming up, like Beatty, yeah. and he's going to be ready this year. He's going to come up this year. He's going to be up in like yeah. June or July. So, I you think can, so. I think so because I think Buck is gonna gonna you know gonna have something to say about it. You're gonna see Alvarez gonna too. I guarantee you, Johnny. Yeah. You're gonna see Alvarez. I bet. I bet you Alvarez comes. Oh, he's up. only 19. Alvarez, I don't see him coming up he's that gonna, soon. He, he's they're gonna give him a taste this year. They're gonna bring him up and let him stay. Dude, he's destroyed. There's not much more he could do down there. The, the problem is you can't ignore greatness. I don't care how old he is. 
You know what I'm saying? Why yeah, are you gonna, because I mean, he's 19 and he's hitting 40 home runs and freaking and 300 at bats. You got the kid's ridiculous, dude. Yeah, I mean, I just I don't know about greatness. Before I said like it's good. Yes, he's in the minor leagues. He's but in not he's not, in Triple A. He's destroying every league he plays in. Like, well, he's in Double A. He last went into Triple A and for the land. So it. so look, but what I'm saying is before. Before you go, like let's say his bat's on fire and he's tearing up the minor leagues, it it doesn't always equal when, to let me major ask you league question. success. Let me ask you a question. When do you have a guy who does damage like that and you wind up bringing him up early? When any superstar that you see that came up, Mike Trout came up in 19, guys come I'm up I'm not early. saying that, yes, but as this a catcher, the, it's hard. The Mets have a history a of catcher, waiting. Yeah, but listen, the catcher, Mets hard. have a history of waiting. Yes, they, they don't. don't Bring guys up. But it's they like, also have I a want history to protect of overvaluing no, guys. No, they don't. Too. No, oh, they, they didn't over, overvalue. Overvalue, but they don't bring him up early. I'm talking about bringing him up early. Right, but here's a, yes, but here, well, I'm not overvaluing uh, this guy. He's doing it in front of us. Okay, but what I'm saying yeah, is, he's hitting 400 foot bombs, dude. What I'm saying in regards to it. Think, go ahead, John. I think what Mike is saying. I think what Mike's saying is true on the fence because the catcher position is, is a is a position that it's more like the brain of the game. So yeah. If he's a 19 year old catcher. You know, you got I get to that point. From Scherzer, you got to get the yeah, from but no, but Johnny, I'm not saying you put him in now. What you do is you bring him up to sit behind a professional, and I, I, yeah, he I, has I, to I, watch I and learn the pro. You can't come yes, up but here's the thing: if he's start, coming up, and he a, can't come up here and start. But if That's he's not at, right, but if he's coming up as a 19 year old, are you taking at bats in precious learning periods as him being a right, full time catcher right, from the minor right. leagues? You're Even gonna, if he's not in the majors, because he's dominating down there. Yes, so that's my point. But he still needs to control it. No, he's not missing. No, no. Listen, control nothing. He's Destroy, okay. Listen, he's destroying. The, every, I know that. Just give but me a second. He, yes. He's destroying every league he plays in, right? So at this point, playing in those leagues is not doing any benefit for him because he's destroying everybody. So let him come up. As long as this next season starts and he continues on this, because that's the trend he's on. Right. Every league he plays in, he, he's getting. He's, but so if he's sitting on the bench getting 200, maybe 100. I'm not saying bring him up in the beginning of the year. I'm talking about at the end of the year where yeah, you're going to give natural. him. A, but you're that's natural. Give him he's on the 40 man roster. Baby's, Baby's going to come up in June. But that's July. the four, Right. But it's the 40. I'm not going to bring him up that early, you, but no, that's the 40 man roster. You could bring him up a little bit earlier than 40. They're on the 40 man roster. You could bring him up a little bit earlier than 40. You could if you need to. You could if you need to. The control shit is under question anyway. The whole. Well, that's why they're locked out right that's what I'm saying. So it's not going to matter because that's what it always was with the Mets. The Mets always wanted the control of the contract. That, well, we don't always, have the Wilpons they anymore. Were always, that's Do you my know why point. you control so it? So now you're, now, you know you're kinda, now you're kind of picking up what I'm putting down. I know what you you're putting. I know what you're, I picked it up. I don't know if I'm necessarily you have a, putting it down. I put it down. You're picking it up. Well, I picked it up. You, you missed my point. No, no, no. I put it down. You just you said now it you're up, picking Michael. up what I'm putting down. What is it? Yeah. I put it down. You pick it up. Hey, the backup guy for us is still Nito, right? Nito is still, Nito is still the uh, backup? I think he will. But what I'm saying is Nito's not going to – Nito's not changing the game for you. So what happens is you can at some point to give him his – got to get him seasoned. you got to bring him up at some point and let him see the speed of the game. you got to let him catch pro pitchers. But a lot of the t- – got to remember one thing too. He's going to be catching a lot of these young kids anyway because – the Mets don't look. You have four, five, uh, four pitchers on the Mets that are not going to the, down to the minors. Every other, th- except the minor, uh, and th- not including the bullpen. But you have about three kids that the Mets are intending on bringing up in the next couple of years that he knows. Okay, so so he has that experience with them already. So he needs to come up. A f- I'm not saying for the full year. I'm saying at the end of the year. So let's just to say, get it because of what he's doing now. So let's say his for, trajectory started a little bit sooner let's than say I it's think. Thirty-five anticipated. games he gets. Let's say it's thirty-five games he gets. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's because it's like going to be at least once or twice a week, depending. Right. right? If you could get it twice a week, that'd Bless be great. You. But me, you know. But what? So the point is, if he's only getting once a week, right? Is it worth it that he's not? Catching, getting the bats, yeah, the I think it. I think it is at that. But point. I think because because he's catching, so good, he's so far ahead of schedule. Right, but the ca- the catching is the is the the port. Controlling yeah, I, the pitching, yeah, controlling the pitchers. But you also got to remember, you know, you know what you're also doing. You're also saving his knees. Those games, you're not. You're there's benefits to both. You you can have an argument on both sides. You could say, all right, well, he needs the experience. But when you're a catcher, you're a catcher. You know, like catching twelve but, okay, more games is not so going to change many, but how it, you are. Here's a number to Defensively, look at. he's a superstar in the making. Okay, so here's his an, arm is ridiculous. He has a just he has a plus plus arm. He has a plus. He has how, plus, is, he, how is he? How is he as far as calling the game? Though, every, at, Slugger, this kid right now, as far as his project, as far as his um, evaluation, there's not a negative in his game. 
because he lost he lost weight. He runs. He's everything. He does everything. He throws the ball. He's a great catcher. He has power and he hits for average. He's like that kid. I, I I think I think that kid will come up. Honestly, I think that kid will come up in Buck's second year. Yeah, maybe. That's Listen, what but I, what I'm saying is, he, at, the, the only reason why I said yeah, I said it because he's so he's having such a good like oh, he's it, ready. He's ready. Oh, he's, he's ready. doing it, dude. T- t- the double A, they had to push him out. But what I'm saying is, how many catchers? How many future stars, studs? Yeah, were catching regularly, more than. 300 at bats. Real Mudo came and out early. Real Mudo started very I don't know, but I mean, Pudge I don't know the age. Pudge Rodriguez started at 19. A, he did. He did. But I'm saying, what, is the, what is the... And look, Pudge played till he's 45. <laughs> well, when you do half your year on steroids, half your career that. on steroids, yeah, right. he was, yeah, he was a steroid guy. He was a steroid guy. I just, I just, think, I just think if it was, if, if, if Mito was that catcher and not McCann, I think he'll come in this year. Next yes, year. I agree. Because we have McCann... Because we have McCann and because I think the same reason we hired Buck was because, oh, we got Buck as a man- the manager to manage this team. I think the catcher to catch this team right now is going to be McCann, obviously, to be experienced and calling the games. And he already got a repertoire with, with, with the Grom, and I'm sure he's going to find it really quick with, with Scherzer. Yeah, but he was and hurt I a lot of the wanna... year. He doesn't. McCann doesn't really have any kind of relationship with these I guys. I know, but I don't think you want to put a rookie behind him. No, I'm not saying uh, now, no. Slugger, but I'm not. Yeah, what Scherzer's I'm saying, not getting a rookie. What I'm saying is, what I'm saying is it, it, that's my point. You have two superstar pitchers. That, so yeah. more than anything, he has to get used to them. And they have to get used to him. Yeah. That's what you. Yeah. That part I think because you don't listen. You don't want to like. You don't want to lose one benefit for the sake of the other. But if you can meld the two together, like he can be a game changing kind of player. So it would hurt the team to not have him play with with Scherzer and Degrom. So we have a three year window to get them together. So they might have if he doesn't come up this year, maybe they have two years. You know. But my point is. You want to take advantage of that. And the Mets were always scared of that shit. They were always yeah, but let's nervous. Just, right. They never brought guys up. They brought up David Wright a year too late. And he came up and he freaking tore it up. Rookie well, you year. know what's funny about that? They David, do it with everybody, though. But, Jose yeah, but, Reyes came up at 20. He could have. They brought him up at 19. They sent him back down. But the thing with David Wright, which is funny. Because of the control shit. Willie Randolph was the coach, and he didn't know what to do with him. He had no idea who he had. And remember, David Wright was batting eight. Eight in his yeah, lineup, dude, yeah. and after like a month, they were like, "Why? What? Why is this guy batting eight? Every time he hit the ball, it sounded different. Right. And you're like, "This kid, yeah. he's batting three twenty, and you're like, he's batting eighth. Like, but what's I think wrong that, with you? I think the different baseball back then. You know, I think that because they protected their 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 young players. Yeah, but I think also like the, the and the, I think it was more about business. I right. really believe that. I and, think part. Yeah, I think there's a big part of it. I also think that like if you have the right manager, understands his players, even if like. He maybe he doesn't know David Wright. Like let's say David Wright's coming up now. Maybe Buck doesn't know David Wright, but he's going to look him up. He's going to figure out all his intangibles. Right, he's going right, to figure right, stuff right. out. So he's going to say, "All right, Dave, you're going to bat sixth in my lineup." In his head, so he's going to figure it out. Willie Randolph, which I'm surprised, never got another shot at managing. I love Willie. You know, I think he did a good job with the hitting, not with the pitching, but he did a good job with the, he was the great, lineup. He was a good manager, man. He was a good manager, and he never got another job at it. But what it was was it, like it was trying to figure out. Who's got the stuff and keep them out there? And who's hitting and who needs to be taken out for a day and who needs to put it right. in? So the best Knowing manager... Knowing the nuances, right, right, right. Right, so that's why we're... But I think what, I, what, I'm, bet, what Buck, I'm hopeful of Buck is that what, he's, he'll see the talent and understand that because he's been around the game so long. Like, But look what, what he's doing what, as an analyst. What is the benefit? Right, and that's benefit. And he's an an- analyst. He, he, an, he was an analyst. An, 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 he's an analyst. He was an analyst. He's an, an, an analyst. He was an analyst. He was an analyst. No, but as an analyst, he, he was in the Quantico. Game from, he watched the game from outside. <laughs> but he has to judge it that way also. In, yeah. Right. So I think that you get in a little bit of more open mind when you're seeing a kid that is the only reason why I'm talking about Alvarez like this. Baby is on track to come up this year because, you know, he's 20. I think he's going to be 21. He's 20 now. Alvarez just turned 19. He was 18 for most of the year last year, right? He turned 19. Yeah, that's what over, happens the next year. Your winter. birthday comes. But I'm saying he's a, young, he's a young kid. <laughs> This kid was literally destroying the baseball. Yes. So but that's what I'm saying. So when you have a dude that young that hits the ball like a man, yeah, and, if, and he literally just became a 19 years old, I think you're allowed to say you're a man. You know. But I, mean? I would say like the, the only reason, the only slightly disagree, not disagree, so like opinion wise, like what I would do with him, if he was an outfielder, if he was a left fielder, 
or uh, right. third you, baseman. You're just delicate about the catcher. The catcher. If he right. was, if he was every so other position, I would throw him out. So there. you don't think? Let me ask you guys both a question then. So you don't think that it's more important to get him like in tune with his star pitchers than it is? To but get that's him... what spring training is about, right? Like, but he'll wanted, be in spring training. Yes, that's what the most important he'll be thing, there. right? Like, right, Johnny. Like he's going to be in spring training, so you're going to give him. But you can see. Here's the he's thing. Gonna him, he's he's going to catch. I'm sure he's going to catch the Grom, and I'm sure he's going to catch Scherzer in spring training. Oh no, he already did. Yes, Johnny. But, Johnny. I, but if listen, they don't know, hold I on. Was, when you guys interviewed me, do you remember the night you interviewed yeah. me when I was in spring yeah, training? Yeah, yeah. They were all playing. The whole lineup was, yeah. and Degrom pitched. If yes, you remember. but here's the thing: is though, and like, Degrom was thrown Alvarez, and so Alvarez has already caught him. They as, know each other at some point, right? And you know, like, say, Bucks, like, I know I'm not going to start the season with Alvarez as my backup or my starter. Right. Then you, you need those two guys that are going to be there to catch those two studs. Everyone else is going to fall. You've got whoever you keep, Peterson, um, you know, they got to search for another, a few other arms. Who else do we have down there? I like McGill. Tyler oh, McGill is good. McGill, yeah, we don't Tyler know. Tyler McGill is a good pitcher. We don't know. Yes, he was a good like pitcher. That. We don't know if he stays the fifth. Let's say no, he was but a, I just like what some I guys saw are him. a fluke. Yes, uh, Peterson. Some, Peterson's a little. I think he's got. Look, he's a good power he's good. lefty. Yeah, I no, let he's him, not power. He's That's what bugs me out. He's in every other game, guy. <laughs> yeah, but you know, what, like he said I, that he's got. He throws heat. He throws heat with that fastball. Like mid nineties, he's six six. It's no, kind of, but, yeah. he's a little bit higher than. I don't think he's okay, a power guy. But let's say, just say it like that. Like I'm p- comfortable with two lefties, whatever it is. So if they're looking at it and they know for a fact in spring training, week one, week two, that Alvarez is not going to be the guy to catch, no matter how hard he hits, catch those two guys. They're not going to take away catching duties from Nito and McCann because they're going to need those guys to know pitcher one, pitcher two, pitcher three, pitcher four. Right. Pitcher five could be yeah. any catcher. No, I get that. I understand that. Yeah, I think I think because of the position, it's, it's a little tougher. Because if he was a left fielder, if he was a right fielder, yeah, it'd be a no brainer. Right, you have to it's definitely easier, protect right. catchers more. But what yeah. all all I'm saying is that talent is going to force them to play their hand. Yeah, like, you can't let that shit sit, man. It's like it's basically yeah. like you know, it's like you need a million dollars and you know you have a million dollar diamond, but you're afraid to sell it because you just want you, know you like mean? the fact that the value but you really is need the money. Like you're like, maybe I'll get a million five tomorrow. Like, no, 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 no. Just so Johnny, sell it. Johnny, we're going to have to take you. stay on there. We're just going to take a, a, a 30 second pause. This is going to be the Choquito. Choquito, Choquito one uh, is here this, 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 and we're going to sample it and taste it. This Are you is Choquito ready? one. This is Choquito one. Oh, so he outdid me because he bought two different variations. Are you ready? I'm actually, I'm actually I'm actually I just watching you guys. Oh, uh, are you? Are you? Yeah. yeah How do my ears look? Do I look? Do I look completely non-binary? Do I look like? Yeah, you, yeah, you look like a hashé. You don't know if I'm a hashé. Yeah, hashé reindeer. <laughs> Here we go. The first, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The first sip of the choquito. <laughs> Let's see. Try it. That looks. That looks pretty good, actually, man. It's got a nice color to it. It really looks good, right? Wow, that's yeah, strong, a- dude. Yeah. Woo! Ooh, yeah. You said mine was strong. Oh, my God. Yeah. This is legit. That's really good, though, This man. is di- Diplomatical Rum. It's got... It's from Venezuela. Ah. All right, so now, so now, now this is a trick, and this is this is the whole thing about a coquito, and, and, and the coquito is that that when you, you drink it, you shouldn't taste the liquor. See, we when were talking about that before. It, you, you you taste it, but it shouldn't be something that overpowers. Overpowers, right? Well, see, mine, my yeah, blanquito, you tasted it. Like yeah, his after over- <laughs> You drank it, and you were like, "Wow, that's good." And then and all of a sudden, like, you're like, like, "Oh my god, there was liquor in there." Yeah, this. Uh, that's how oh, my. Yeah, that's why mine was perfect. <laughs> that's why mine was perfect. <laughs> that's why I'm winning so far. Yeah. All right, so you, far, you, no, okay. Mike. Mike, listen. This is very good. I, this is really good. I I am totally in agreement with you. This is really good, but when you taste it, you're listen, like, I, God I, damn, that's. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna be there next week and try well, it out, man. Yo, yeah, yo, I, I'm pretty sure I could light this on fire right now. Yeah, even I'm, though it's like half milk. This is pretty much gonna be like if you could light milk. You could on start fire, your house on fire yeah. and put it out in the yeah. same glass. You, you would have heat for the whole month of February with this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need. You don't need. You walk to work with this, you'll never feel the war, the cold. Just dip in your Yule log. It'll yeah. burn for 13 hours. <laughs> You'd be like, what's that bird in the backyard? That's Choquito. It's Choquito Glaze. <laughs> Yo, how do you... <laughs> Yo, we can turn this shit into a mad uh, enterprise. Yeah, this the... You can drink it or fuel your home for, for it. Hey, it. did your car run out of gas yeah, and you're worried about going to take it a walk? Put a label on it. Put a label on it. That's all. Yo, listen, yeah. we're gonna we'll make we'll make Choquito to, to fuel cars, but they can only be Corollas. But when the tire <laughs> <laughs> Bring them back. When the time is right. <laughs> 
When the time is oh, right. Oh, look at that. He put, oh my God, he put it in a baseball bat. This is, this is called oh, the it. boomstick. See this? Look at that thing. Look at this. Hit and run rum. It's a cho choco boom. That looks pretty this is the choco boomstick. The boomstick. It's drip. It, it looks like it, it shot a load all over itself. It it's, did. it's dripping white stuff. It's disgusting. <laughs> I want to throw up right now. <laughs> it looks like a sex toy. <laughs> Look, it's oozing. What is it doing right now? Look at it. Oh, Look at yo, it. that is so smell sexual. Yo, if I can't put my mouth on that. Though. No, smell it, I said. <laughs> smell it. Oh, that tastes good. That smells good. <laughs> yo, I, Slugger, you're so lucky you didn't come here. <laughs> What is he doing? I love it. Yo, this show is turning into, please put I'm your children it. away. <laughs> <laughs> Kids, this is how it's done. Yo, so his choquito yeah. was leaking all over his pipito. I, I see it. The choquito and the pipito. <laughs> yeah, it's a different show now. This is really good, though. It's it's just mad strong. What did you so Just the imperial, uh, in, in, what is it? Empatico? <laughs> Dude, diplomatico. Uh, diplomatico. <laughs> Imperialico. Dip, dip, diplomatico rum. Diplomatico wow, that's, rum. That's really, really strong stuff. Man. Well, the other, you know what? It's crazy because that one, that one, I cooked it. I made, like, did everything <coughs> off the stove. And this one, a little bit of stove, but mostly this one was like blender and just like hand mix. blend. I don't cook shit. No, I, uh, yeah. I just blend everything and I let it sit. No, and, so this one and is. I shake it and I put new cinnamon This stick. one but is. I, you know what the thing I think with mine is? So, Slugger, you weren't on, on the air when we drank mine. Um, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I use cinnamon sticks and a little bit of cinnamon, but I don't, it's not overwhelmingly cinnamon. It's more, um, like a, more of a coconut and coconut milky kind of like, right. so it kind of, it brings down the sweetness. And what I did was I made a vegan option for my son and I made one with condensed right. milk. So the condensed milk one was nice and sweet, but yo dude, you know what I think? I, I, I wrote it down too, but I found the recipe for, like you said, where you drink it. And you have zero, yeah. um, like zero idea I mean, that there's any there. booze in it. You know it you, you know it's there because it, it's it's there. You'll taste no, it. I think you taste it, it after it's done. Everything. You're like, whoa, my god! And it, like yeah, it warms your throat up. It's beautiful. <clears throat> yeah, you taste every ingredient in the coquito, and that's that's why you know as, as, as you know it, I don't know there was a restaurant in uh in New York called the San Juan the old San Juan restaurant something like that yeah it used to be I think on 48th and uh, 48th and 9th or so 47th and 9th and you know Coquito is the type of drink that you don't drink like a full glass obviously it's like a shot glass right you, you can't know, drink too much of it it's too heavy right so you know we would go to this place you know remember I, I was serious a few blocks away from it so we would go there whether it was for breakfast lunch or dinner you would just Go and say, hey, let me get coquito. The guy will pull out a bottle and serve me coquito for breakfast, for lunch, dinner, whatever. Time. Yeah, that's, yeah, you yeah. can have that for with your coffee in the morning. Hell yeah, it's awesome in coffee. Yeah, it's, it's the best thing, bro. It's at night, I, at night, I have a piece of cake and some coquito <laughs> and the coffee. I swear, it's delicious. No, but but well, not, not every, I have not it before I go to bed. Coquito. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, can I not, cut you not, off? No, no, I'm saying that that not everybody makes a good coquito, bro. I'll tell you that. I, you I, know what? I, I've been I, doing it for. I've been making coquito probably ten years now. I think I, and because I'm a bartender too, like I, you know. Yeah, yeah, you, you got it. You got the mixes right. It's you just got to know how much booze to put in without killing somebody. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you know, real honestly, like for the amount, like I know, I know how much booze I usually use for my amount. So if I'm doing a certain amount of bottles, going to sleep. So you know, if I if if I'm making a certain amount of bottles, which will be like how many? I know how many blender pitchers I'm gonna do. You know, that's kind of right. how I do it, you know? So I know how much... Yeah. I, I mix everything pre-mixed before I cook, you know, before I mix it, before I actually mix right. it together. And I put it in a big-ass vat. I don't cook it, but I put it in a big vat, and I make. Right. I, I put all the ingredients together at once. And then, with the condensed milk, I blend it with a little... like one. I'll do one can of milk, one half a can of condensed milk, one can of half evaporated with my blend. And that's how I get the perfect, because then I control how much liquor is in each batch. You mm. know what I'm saying? If not, you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I measured it because yeah. I'm using 151. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, if you don't measure, if you measure it each each batch and you do it to taste, it can kind of get crazy, especially yeah. if you're drinking it while you go, because you can get drunk while you're making it. Well, I did, what it. I didn't do was I didn't drink while I was doing. it. That's good. I didn't. I don't either. I don't <laughs> drink when I'm doing. They got me messed yeah. up. Yeah. 
Look, Mike's sleeping in the corner with his hoodie on. He, <laughs> he doesn't drink much. He doesn't drink much. We gave him. Well, because at home, basically, this one, the. Uh, you know the why, though, Slugger? Because he's Puerto Rican and we didn't give him coquito. We gave him blanquito and choquito. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. <laughs> the choquito put him to sleep. And now he's now he's cansadito. <laughs> Oh, oh man, cansadito! You 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 cute little baby, tired. <laughs> he, look, he looks like a, like a, like a wrapped up teddy bear. Yeah, but uh, he's he ready to take a nap. I'll tell you something that I tried for the first time last year, and it was coquito cupcakes. Mm. And dude, dude, let me tell they, you, man, they make a coquito I, donut at Doology. Oh, dude, that, that that coquito cupcake was was sick, bro. I mean, it, it was like you ever tried the tres leches? Oh, I love that. That's yeah. that, that's my well, second favorite um, dessert. Well, I think well, I want to turn this into a cupcake. That, picture that, but with a coquito flavor and, and the actual liquor in it. It's not just the flavor of it, but the whole uh, liquor and everything. Oh, man, dude, I tried it for the first time and I went nuts. Oh, and wow. in Puerto Rico, obviously, they, they take the coquitos to the next level. I have a uh, one of my uh, aunts who actually makes coquitos, uh, pistachio. pistachio <gasps> oh, that's, yeah, see, pistachio. Yes, I love pistachio. But Mike, oh. Mike, get a, Mike, Mike might be allergic to it, though. No, it was cashews, cashews. cashews, cashews. Yeah. So it's a funny story. He ate cashews ha, ha, ha. for three days and he was killing himself and didn't even know it. I was like, so I, so I thought I was like, I felt like I might have been getting a cold. So I was like, you know, check myself out, wouldn't get tested, nothing. So a uh, couple of days go by, I feel it again. My throat's getting super, super dry. And, uh, you know, I'm like, like I, I, I can swallow. I feel like there's phlegm, but there's nothing. There's no coloring and all that. I don't feel right. I don't have a fever. It goes away. So after week three, we found out that um, I was I developed an allergic reaction to cashews. Oh shit! And so I was I, eating the he, cashews. And he kept forcing himself to eat them. Look, I would eat them for like a couple of days, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's just like you're just something scratchy in my throat. He's like, they're healthy. I'm gonna keep walking. Right. Them, like I got hiking this. in the woods and eating cashews. This. I got to, like, well, I yeah, I put guys them, got them up. guys got hives and his freaking tongue's no, like the, swollen like a pillow. The only thing that happened was the 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 effects of my throat. So like, if I was thinking like I was, my eyes are swelling up, that's got to be a problem. That didn't happen, so I I didn't think that it was. And then all of a sudden, I looked in. We did the we, you know. Uh, it, it leads, check into it, leads, it. It turns out that it was I was I have developed an allergic reaction. Slug, to slugger. It leads back to yeah, crazy, estupido. Man. It leads back to the estupido. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look. So you know it's funny. I was doing a little <laughs> bit of research. I was doing a little research. <laughs> wow. Look at that. I, I was doing a little research, and I was you know just because of the the state of stupid that this country is in. So yeah. I, I just wanted to see how like how ridiculous. Oh, wait, before somebody, you go there, I just want, want to look up something and I had to refresh my memory. The 1996 Yankee roster. Yeah. Gooden. Uh, Jimmy Key. Cone was traded and brought in there. Um, there's a like. Yo, the Choquito batch number two. Oh my God, that's so good, dude. Well, that has a hint of chocolate and coffee. Yeah, he put coffee and chocolate in it. Oh my God, that's unbelievable. That's, that's going to turn dude, into that, a cupcake. That blows number one away. Not even close. Yeah, one is just to get. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, one one is going to make you. One is going to make you like run your head into a wall. <laughs> number two, you could sip like a gentleman and have a cigar, like, yeah. a, like a human. You could be human with the second yeah, one. It's human. So anyway, yeah. like, so what I did was I, I wanted to see like, you know, because I just thought how stupid the country is, right? and how. Yeah. The leaders of this country, it starts with the leadership, right? It always starts with the top, right? Yeah. So I, I, I go, let me check out let me, some of these like dumb laws that are out there. So yeah. in Indiana, it's illegal to sniff glue. Oh, like, I, yeah, I've seen shit like this. You Sorry. can literally, you no, can literally. Things that are illegal in other states. You could go to jail for sniffing glue. Yeah. Right? It's so, but you like, there are so many things in, in, in states where you could do, like it's, you know, you could get away with anything. Like Jersey, Jersey's crazy because you murder is obviously one crime, but it's illegal if you wear a bulletproof vest while you're committing murder. <laughs> and that's, a, that's murder's an actual, bad, but that's the, an actual law. So, murder's bad, but bulletproof vest. Mm, so my yeah. point is, my point. That's literally a written law. So that's my a, point is, how stupid of our are our brothers in New Jersey that you literally have a law that if somebody murders somebody, if they have an illegal a bulletproof vest, it's illegal. 
If they don't have a bullet for Brazil, it's not still that, illegal. It's you know what's crazy? Like they might get off of the murder case if they didn't wear the bulletproof vest. Uh, it's it must be a loophole. <laughs> that, it's Listen, stupid. All I know that, that that law was on before I moved to Jersey, so I had nothing to do with that. I, uh, you live there, and it's like insane. Just so we, you know that God forbid anything happens, don't wear that bulletproof vest. It's unbelievable. Just commit murder. Just be a murderer. It's okay. It <laughs> I mean, like the fact the fact that you can you could like. Get arrested for sniffing glue. <laughs> like, Which should be a that. thing. That should be a fucking thing. No, it, you should be allowed to sniff whatever no, the hell you, you want. Not. It's no, glue. Not glue. Not glue. Not glue. It's not glue. glue. <laughs> Remember making fun of those guys? Like, do eat the glue? Yeah, I didn't make fun of them. I want to be able right. to make fun of those people. Yeah, if you like, arrest them, there's you, nobody to make fun of. Right. If you eat the glue. And tell me you didn't sniff glue once in your life. So you're going to say you should. That's like no, but jaywalking. Those, yes, but those people. That everybody do, sniff glue. You everybody. sniffed it? Okay. Everybody so, sniffs glue. Your point is what? So everybody should go to jail? No, it's... <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's like in Israel, everybody goes the to the military. World. Everybody goes to the military? Lock up the whole world. And in this world, everybody should go to jail. Yo, 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 yo. You know, I just realized, I just realized that as I'm watching you guys on the screen, I'm showing, I, I just realized what you look like and who you look like with the, uh, the antlers on your head. <laughs> who does he look like? Who do I look like? You look like, you look like an island boy. Uh, <laughs> Yo, dude, I was literally, I was literally like brought to their attention. When I walk down the street they and were, see wet, they were brought you to my attention like a week, that? a week and a half ago. And I'm like, who are these The island boys. You know I'm thugging, right? You know I'm thugging, right? These kids are ridiculous. Ridiculous, Mikey's man. gonna bring up the island boys right now. Yeah, keep the island. There. That's what their hair looks like. The antlers. It's Me want to be an island boy. Yeah, so any um back, island toy. Back to estupido. Sean is boy. So if you go to Tennessee and you want to run for office, if you want to run for public office, it's illegal for you to duel anybody while you do that. This is a current law. Right, so, but it was created in 1604. It's a current law. So what? They don't re reevaluate no, these laws? No. Well, that's my point. Estupido. They're, we are living in a world and in the country necessarily with Island specifically Boy. Specifically with Island Boy. Island Boy are celebrities. <laughs> Think about that. These laws, while you sing Island Boy, it just proves how ridiculously yeah. estupido this country is. And they're going to make is. hundreds of millions of dollars of Island Boy. It's the United States of estupido. An Island Boy. <laughs> It really is. I mean, it's look. Where did you get your coquito look, from? The so, island boy. so you know, in South Carolina, in South Carolina, you have to be eighteen or over to play pinball. That's a law. <laughs> that's a law. You can literally get in trouble. It's a law. You know what? That's not. That's not an island boy. It's crazy. But you know. But you can. You can. You know. You can probably. You could boy. probably have sex with a farm animal in that same state. Not in South North Carolina, you can. Not South yeah, Carolina. No, South Carolina's pretty. South Carolina's not. A, they've got a new image. North Carolina. And you know, in Florida, it's illegal to have sex with a porcupine. That's some. <laughs> that's hard sex. I'm telling you, this is that a is real, hard sex. This is a real. That real is look. hard sex. It's hard sex. That's hard sex. <laughs> that is some seriously. Rough Did you get sex. to the point? <laughs> yeah. Did you get to the point? Yeah. That's definitely I rough. Repeatedly. You know, I don't know if you're getting rougher than a porcupine. You can't get rougher than a porcupine. I mean, but, you know, th this is this is what I mean by, you know, like, how how should we feel as a people being that those led by these, by these idiots? It's okay, but this, well, it's different. If you, when you look up... This one, I'm surprised that people like Island Boy actually were talking about. Uh, right. yeah. But see... As a dumpster that, 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 you know, that goes on every day, we're just, like, talking about it, but it, it happens. Listen, J Johnny, you know, the, the government announced there was 154, this year alone, there were 154 legitimate, un unidentified flying objects, mm -hmm. legitimate, that were not any, they, like, this is the first time in the history of, of mankind that governments are basically disclosing this, so they, they're literally yeah. calling this the year of disclosure. So the wildest part is that the government's releasing all this information, and people are still more intrigued by freaking Island Boy and the Kardashians yep. and Yo, I saw a show. I saw a show about a transgender girl. Um, um, because I listen to Howard. You know, I, I'm a humongous Howard Stern fan. As as much as I disagree with him, because he's a germaphobe weird dude. Like he's a weirdo. Yeah, and I know he's your neighbor. It's serious, right, uh, Johnny? Yeah. Boy, yeah he yeah, was yeah. when he wasn't all freaking germaphobe out and like home, but. 
He's always been a germaphobe. I've been listening to Howard for 30 years. He's always been a germaphobe. You know, he's freaked out about yeah. people. He doesn't yeah. like being around people. Well, Howie Mandel was like that. He's well, Howard's worse which, because... Yeah, but Howie Mandel, it was so bad, he used Purell like yeah, right. six but times a day. But this is different. Howard but he got to the it. point that... Hold it, sorry. He got to the point where, because of the germaphobe, that the Purell doesn't even work on him but anymore. The, dude, he's... Listen, like it's different because Howie just doesn't want to shake. Howie goes out of his house. Howard Stern doesn't want to leave his house. Well, like, which is, he's no. a different kind of guy, you know? Stay in, stay so in. I listen to him, you know, I, and he's a f brilliant interviewer, and he's like, I don't agree with, like, his, necessarily with his politics, because yesterday he said, Joe, not yesterday, right before the, the um, Christmas lockdown, he said Joe Biden's doing too good of a job, because the, the country's over-vaccinated or some shit. I was like, oh my God, like, that's a guy who's been in his house too long, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, you know, listen, because he ain't watching shit. He's watching, like, the fucking Real Housewives and stuff, so they, he's really not informed. Yeah. But anyway, not the, the point I was saying is that you have a guy like this um, who, with power, and, and he was talking about um, these celebrities more than he was talking about this real stuff that's going on with the United States government, and I know he's entertainment, and I get that. But there's a lot of funny in Aliens. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of shit to laugh about. Don't, don't you think that maybe, just maybe, they do it purposely where they try to, they, they throw it out there and they say, so that later on, when it does happen, they say, hey, we told you about no, it. They did, so they're well, absolutely When they were talking that. about the Space Army, 1, they were like, all of a sudden, all the aliens. They are desensitizing fucking... it. And you know, what they, you know what they were nervous about with Trump? Because Trump did that. I think they're nervous that he found out a little too much. Like, they gave him information that he knew about, and he just goes, we need a space army. So, because you're not, they're not supposed to divulge this shit. Do you know the, the, the Book of Secrets? Right. Right? It's like, the, the, yeah, if yeah. you ever watched, it's not real, but there is some, like, insider the stuff, show, like yeah. the president. Like, so it was, um, if you watched National Treasure, where you know, the Nick Cage Nick, movie, Nick where he, Cage, yeah. right? Like Great movies. And so... There's yeah. also I in love the, those movies. Also in the conspiracy movie, uh, Tom we Hanks when he too? did um, what was the um the good stuff? What was the movie? The Vinci, uh, the Vinci Code and all that. The Vinci Code. They yeah, the Vinci, Vinci Code. code and, uh, so they say that right. they talk about it. There's a book, right? There's a book that the president of the United States gets and has all the secrets, all the secrets, right? And so they, it's a legit story, like they, because they asked it to Obama. And he was Is like, there well, a book of secrets. I know, yeah, right. Yeah. And he was like, oh, I can't really tell you. You're gonna talk about that. Like, let's talk about something else. All right, well, like, so. They're all the NDAs. You know those non-disclosures? Yeah. That's the same. Yeah. So these are presidents, though. They're at the highest level of office. The, the same thing, like Bob Lazar, okay? I've seen this. And, well, Bob and Lazar was a whistleblower in the 70s and 80s, right? And everybody thought he was a maniac and nuts. And blah, blah, blah. Now, Bob Lazar is being held highly regarded as... as well, because more is coming out like about these Well, that, that everything he said was, was accurate. He said that he was basically reverse engineering on... Reverse engineering UFOs. And there is, it's a big business and it's going like it's been happening for a long time. You didn't, nobody wanted to hear that. They didn't want to hear that back then, especially in the 80s. Like, so you got a situation now where UFOs are so prevalent. And the reason why they're prevalent and they're being reported so much is the same reason why anything else is being reported more because everybody has freaking cameras. So yeah. everybody has an ability to post and upload and become a superstar. You know, back in the day, you needed a platform to release information. But you were dismissed as Everybody a kook. Everybody has that. You were dismissed as a kook. Well, you know what? You would just, how about this? This is why, and I, said, I think I said this and on I, the show I, before. 30 years ago, if you said you believed in aliens, you were considered crazy. Yeah. If you say yeah. you don't believe in aliens now, I believe that you're, you're crazy. And that's my opinion. But what's the aliens? You, well, let's describe like other Intelligent species out there. A species, like not other intelligent. Like, I not only do I not physical only, like human. Replica I'm talking about kinda. intelligent. Listen, not only do I believe that there's intelligent species out there, I believe there's intelligent civilizations living amongst each other out there, dude. It the the number. Listen, Star Trek. The one thing Star about Trek. Star Trek, Star Wars. Yeah, and everybody laughs about that shit. I'm right? not st yeah. Star Wars. Star Wars Star is Wars, like Star Trek. The same thing. Yeah, they all Star Wars was. Each other. It was like no Earth, but everything was. Every, and meanwhile, else. everything else in life, sci-fi comes to reality. You know, and cooking your food in 10 yeah. seconds was on the Jetsons. Now you can do it. So my point is, this is the shit. Do you remember I, the episode? Do you remember listen, the, the movie with the Michael, Jetsons? Sorry, the we waking, Mike, are we waking you? Are you, are you awake I now? think we just woke up. I think he was asleep. Do you remember, the, do you remember the... Before we get too far, before we get too far, right? There's a mixed up. vibes disclosure well, about aliens. We are the timeline, uh, motherfucker. Before we get uh, too uh, far. I mean, how does that go? <laughs> Don't drink that coquito anymore. <laughs> sorry. Stop the choquito. Here's your list of states that is not. Zoophilia is not illegal. Illegal. 
Zoophilia. So you can have sex with zoo animals. Nevada, New Hampshire, Ohio, Texas, Vermont, West Virginia, Wyoming, and New Jersey. Well, Nevada makes sense because what happens in Jersey stays in Jersey. Yeah, I mean, right. What happens in Vegas stays, stays in, in Vegas. Vegas. So yeah, so, <laughs> animals, so, people. You saw you saw Hangover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's why it's legal there. In you can bang a zoo animal. So but it, Texas, I believe. Illegal, it, but is it, isn't it illegal to break into the zoo and have sex with the animal? Yes, but if you're already there, you're, oh, you're so if you're in. a zookeeper, look at like yeah, if you're a zookeeper, look uh, at like Texas. That's another word of my. Weird. That's another word of my brother's keeper. Another, <laughs> another way of expressing. That's no, Texas. Back, back Texas, to the aliens. Everything's... Mike, Mike, thanks for this. <laughs> thanks for totally throwing a party off the rails. Um, I've been trying to say it, but he's going. I'm like, no, yo, no, I'm gonna no be like, no more. Yeah, go, no, go back to sleep. <laughs> No more coquito over here. No, but no. The, the point of the point I was bringing up was that the stupid nature of our country is more like intrigued with like dumb stuff than it is with actual stuff that's intrigued. Like, if you don't think aliens are interesting, you know, there's something wrong with you. But what? the problem is, I think people are just nervous about the idea that they are here. And like this, like there are many, multiple people say that not only have they have you know um, species been found, multiple species. And you're at a point where mathematics reigns. Mathematics is, is you cannot disprove math. All right? We all agree on that. So yeah. when you have the amount of, when you have the amount of stars and the amount of galaxies and clusters and, and when it gets to the mathematics of ha- actually how many stars, you know, how, how much substance there is in the universe. To, for us to think that we are unique right. is, a, is a really stubborn, um, I think it's religion-based. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of it's religion-based because you want to feel better about yourself. Like, you're the only one out there. Well, but it doesn't make any sense. You know what's the other thing? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's no, there's no logic behind that. Because one, if you're looking at the math, it's like, like Stephen Hawking, the smartest guy on the planet, right? Or one of them, he said, it goes, it's not, a ma- it's not about... <laughs> 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 I looked at myself and it's oh, crazy. It's Yo, you're so right about this. <laughs> that is so good. It's good. I forgot I had them on, it's dude. It's the island boy. I totally forget I have them on. <laughs> but um, but when like Stephen Hawking said, he goes, he goes, it's not a matter of if there's intelligent species out there. It's a matter of whether they're friendly or not. That's the question we should be asking ourselves. So when you have a guy who's that smart, you know, that's Stephen Hawking. You know what I mean? It's the bright, some considered the brightest mind on the planet at the time. So it's yeah. not about, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I think people are really naive. The ones that are sitting there going, oh, aliens, yeah, aliens, green, hey, blah, 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 blah. Dude, stop that nonsense. Because there are freaking some of the most important people in the United States history and world history. Astronauts, pilots, you know, Air Force pilots. Um, just people of so many different backgrounds beside that. You know, aside from the people that are flying these planes, that see these things and they report them and they're real and they talk mm-hmm. about them and they just get shushed and, and dismissed. And people rather would talk about Bruce Jenner, not, you know, cutting his penis off, you know, and it bugs me out. Like, well, we're I, still waiting for him to do it. And he hasn't done it yeah, because he's, he's not going, going back. To, he's, he's going, going back. back. He's, yeah. he's going back. The greatest back. thing you could ever do is just go back. It's, I, think, I think they <laughs> offered him another Wheaties contract to go back so they, they could call him we, they, it'll be Weenies. Weenie, weenies. Yeah. Weenies, Look, for, weenies for weenies. It's not full weenies. It's just a little weenie. God, I would love for him to go back to Bruce. <laughs> Dude, that would be awesome. He was such a, like, you know, the Kardashians, they ruin everybody. May, I tell you, maybe the aliens will show up. If he goes yeah. back to Bruce and everything's right in the world. Like, they're like, hey, hey, boss, did you see this? Do you think that's partly why the aliens is, go around Earth? Because of cause people Bru- like that? Because Bruce is not yeah. Bruce right Cause now? Because Bruce- <laughs> it's stuff. Like, like, I don't want to sound like a mean guy, but, you know, I always looked at people. We're waiting for Bruce people, to come back. People who acted like they weren't who they are. We're always considered a little weird, right? <laughs> right. So and now it's embraced. Like, so are we just embracing weird people, or are we embracing the freedom to be weird? No, and the, weird yes. is cool. Hold on, I get that. Yes, here's the thing. It's weird. Weird should being not weird be is cool. Weird should not be like, it, look, you're weird. But it's being taught. Yes. Well, weird is well. I don't, is it being taught? It's being taught. What's where is it acceptable? It's being ex- taught well, to be. But acceptable. It, weird should be acceptable because it's it, some people are weird. That's just it. Like no, no, no. But I'm, to you, like it, I'm you, talking about weird, like in a sense of like it's accepted to where 
you know, the whole men peeing in women bathrooms, that's that's not Well, that's not cool. weird. That's not a weird thing. Yes, it is. That's not weird. Sure it is. That's not weird. 100%. Well, hold on. I mean, there's probably other things that describe it, but like weird is I, not I, it. I like weird. I think, weird I think there's other ways to describe it. To me, it. that's the way I like to describe it. No, but, but I'm I, entitled, aren't yeah, I? It's no, still yeah, America. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not, yeah, no, it's still America. Let me just see what New York well, look, says I, about listen, weird. I, I honestly don't care. What, what I mean is probably is another weird. word to describe weird it, right? Is different but than, weird is different for than normal. Weird is Weird is just not normal. I don't agree that that's... And that's normal in any way. All right, right. So then, then but I don't agree that the word is weird. I'm trying to. I could. But first. isn't the definition of weird something that's not normal? Well, no, it's your own definition of weird. All right, so that's my like definition like, of weird. Yeah, that's your definition right, of weird. I just think it is because some people, like some people, describe <laughs> people as weird. Because I love they're different listen, from them. I think RuPaul. Do, I think RuPaul is an entertaining. Like I, I really, I think RuPaul. I think I definitely think he's weird. Personally, I think right, he's a weirdo. But people that but automatically, I'm to that. but like, I, I should automatically be able to think that. That's what I'm saying. Automatically, people use weird as a definition of somebody that's different from them. No, because I, 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 weird people fascinate me. I think Prince was weird. He's one of my heroes. So why is it so bad? That's what I'm but saying. But that's what I'm saying. All that's of a sudden, the, you're judgmental a, when you when you listen. This is the way I feel. Hey, I'm not hey, gonna hide. I'm not judgmental. I'm just talking about no, the word I'm not weird. Saying you, I'm saying I'm just people. saying it, but I'm talking about because the word I weird. think that you're a little bit more careful about like you know like be careful you don't offend people. You know what? No, fuck that. No, I don't care if I, I thought offend about people. It, yeah, I'm not it's... trying to sit here and not listen, Mike. I'm not an offensive person by nature. I never have been. I my whole life. You call me. <laughs> well, it's funny. Wait, 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 it's, Mike, it's different. It's it, different. He calls you Captain Insult. <laughs> the Insult King. The Insult King. But and then Slugger, he'll call people stupid and Slugger, weird. You, you know like, me, Slugger, You know me. My whole life. You know, I, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, you're looking for somebody I'm to not, join. Some... No, I'm just not an abrasive guy. Like I break balls. That's what I'm good at. I've always been funny with that. Like that's why I do that to you. It's not because I'm. In king of insults i'm the king of breaking your balls <laughs> listen you insult the shit out of me too yeah my but point it's is, you my you. point is i know you I'm deserve not, it i know i'm not like a hateful person so if i if i feel like there's no I, malicious intent when no, you're like none whatsoever because i think everybody gets a fair shake but my point is i was you know and i'm not saying everything even that when i was just even when i was even though bathroom? when i was growing up even when i was growing up i'm not yeah because look look the what fair happened. shake look what happened in virginia dude that that governor whatever that guy who won he won. He was a Republican that won in a fully thousand percent Democratic, because a girl got raped in two bathrooms. Two girls got raped by one the same guy, because they kept hiding it. And I'm not trying to get politi- political here. I'm not trying to do that. What I'm saying is that people, you see what like what happened, like with, with the hate. You know, you see what there's none that none comes from me in a sense. I just say weirdos are weirdos. That's all. When you have people that are pushing the agenda, like you should be allowed to pee in that bathroom. That's not cool. That's what I'm saying. Right. Because yeah. they're, they're, they're such a minority that if it's going to save and make little girls feel a little bit more safe, then they should fucking have to pee in a men's room or go pee in their, their own house. That's all I'm saying. It's not, it's not, you're such a dick. <laughs> he showed me a picture of an island boy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, like like I said, I'm not trying to be divisive. I'm just trying to make a point where, you know, like. Point the, the camera, point I did. <laughs> I had it up there. It was like. Island yeah. boy. <laughs> this the no, safety it, but, but the safety of our children and the well being of our children is so far important than hurting somebody's feelings and that's all my point is that's one thousand my point and that's one thousand the reason why a, a, a district like that all democrat all democratic you know um um under low income poor black people voted for a white Republican because he came in he wasn't even a Republican he was a he was a businessman in the home in that area whose child was affected by it and. He ran as a Republican because he couldn't win as a Democrat because the Democrats kept right. But it. there's those there's those moments. So he, there's those moments where you're like, the, "Bravo for that! That's well, a great situation." Th- that's all I'm saying. All I'm saying is that weirdo that weirdo agenda is pushed on people a little bit too much. That's all I'm saying. Like, give, God bless you. Go do whatever you want to. You chop whatever you want to chop off. You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. That's I, look, fine. I agree. But with if you that. have a penis, you're not a woman. You should not be in a girl's bathroom. Yeah, no, that's no, no. all I'm saying. Okay, okay. That's that was my point because okay. because Bruce Jenner didn't cut it off. He so, didn't cut it off. But he's he's allowed to pee in a woman's bathroom. He and do yes. you have a problem with a woman peeing in a man's bathroom? Well, women are are literally less um, aggressive and physical towards the opposite sex, rape wise and stuff. So I feel a little more secure. We're just talking about you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about statistics. Women are are victims. Men are f- devious, bro. So That's just if, a fact. So, so a, a man bathroom, can act like he's a woman just to rape other women. He could do that. So if you're in a bathroom. And you're giving him a free pass, essentially. So if you're in a bathroom. Yeah. And 
a woman uh, comes uh, in. Yeah. I've seen a girl come in. in right? I've seen that happen many times. Yeah, I've okay, tenor, okay. tenor clubs or bars she, where that she happens. Looks at you and she's like, I look, I've seen a girl pee in a urinal, literally pee in a urinal, standing up, the, move the panties over. I'm about to mute him. She's like, island boy. Island boy. He's because I know you're trying to make a joke, and it's island boy. Island boy. She's like island boy. I want to play swords with you. Island boy. I want to play swords. No more. No more choquito. If I'm listen, I know, dude. He gets no more choquito, bro. No, no more choquito. Sluggy, the man doesn't drink for a reason. (laughs) (laughs) We're starting to find out why. He's coming up with all these stories in his head. Maybe if I was in Thailand, Mike. <laughs> Maybe if I was in Thailand, because it's not called Bang Pussy, it's called Bangkok. <laughs> Bangkok. Hey, yo, fellas, daddy, daddy, do these calls. Listen, my brother. Merry, 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 merry Christmas. I hope, merry Christmas, I hope, Johnny. I hope, I hope Lucas wasn't listening to the show. <laughs> yeah, he's oh, not. No, and you know what? He's listening to it, and he's like, "Ah, I knew it. I knew that was Sean was about. I knew. It. I knew he was an island boy." <laughs> That's so funny. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you a picture. I'm gonna send you a picture of my son because he saw. He, I was actually looking through Facebook and he saw the island boy. He's like, Papa, what's that? I said, Ah, oh, these little these kids are they, you know, they're funny. And he wanted to look like one, so I found him a filter and I took a picture of my son looking like an island boy. That's funny. It's, 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 it's hilarious. Well, I'm listen, you have. Uh, I know how much you love. I know how much you love Star Wars. The the book of Boba Fett starts next week. Oh, he can't wait, dude. You understand? Every time he sees that ad, he's like, Papa, Papa, that's soon, right? I said, yes, man. Yeah, soon. next week. I'm you know, so excited. You know, they, were gonna, they had a, a new um, Star Wars movie in the making. And, uh, well, they're doing that in a Han Solo movie. Yes, but the, uh, show. But, but the director who was yeah. supposed to do that had another gig, and they wanted this window. So it was either it was squashed, and it's maybe pushed it's forward for, like, yeah. for a little while, but the woman that they wanted to direct it had two prior two movies that she committed to, so that they we. I think you were looking at three years or four years for the next um, Star Wars movie. Star Wars, and so it yeah. might be more. It might be five. Might be six now because Crazy. of this. But I think they'll anyway, find listen, a director. Brother, to jump Merry right Christmas, in. man. Hey, we Johnny, love you very much, bro. Merry Christmas. Thank you for calling and being the third party. And uh, we'll listen. We'll, we'll we'll play everything by ear. Get better, and we'll we'll figure next week out. Don't you? Hundred yeah, percent. We'll figure it out, man. And I'll bring the poquito, and we'll do it all over again. My man. Yeah, Mike. But Mike can't have any more. <laughs> Mike is cut off. Mike Studio Mike is nothing. You got to see his face right now, bro. He looks like he, he's taking a nap. We got to get him yeah, in a large pot. We got to get him in a large pot for, for Christmas. We're trying to kill him. We make, we make virgin coquito for my son. Uh, we'll I'll bring in the virgin coquito for Mike. Set, listen, send everybody our love, brother. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, brother. Be well. Talk to you soon. Uh, that was a nice call. <laughs> but um, well, my boy Johnny. Yeah, Johnny's the best. I mean, he's he's like one. Of the, Sweep the leg, Johnny. He's the third. Sweep the he's leg. The, he's the third leg. Yeah. He's the big penis of the team. Yeah. Um, He's the parrot on your shoulder. But it, it's funny that it's funny we're talking about uh, <laughs> um, the, co- the coquito. How it's hammered? Funny how how like hammered? Look, because you know what's funny? People don't realize, uh, and you drink it, and it's like, oh my god, this is delicious. And Mike doesn't drink. I know Mike never drinks. And we were giving him like pretty good sized cups, and he's gulping them shits. <laughs> <laughs> don't give him another one, though. Yeah, don't give him Oh, look, one. he has his bottle in front of him. Don't drink the Choquito, the first mason jar, Mike. Mm. You're going to be sleeping in your car. Yeah, don't drink that one. Give that to somebody. <laughs> You're going to be, you'll be sleeping in your, in the studio. Yeah, the first one. Um... Going up at New Year's. <laughs> <laughs> you got three days in here. Everybody so working good. on the, their shows is going to be like, Mike, Mike. <laughs> yeah, these are, these are really good. But, I, you know, it's funny. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask him about um, if he saw any of those, because, you know, the nerds that we are. Mm. Um, the Matrix. I saw The Matrix today. Oh, you watched it? I did. It's, oh. on, it's on HBO Max. So. Is it? Yeah, man. No one? Yo, it's f- so good, dude. St- uh, straight th- from the theater? Straight, straight up on Max. Why? I don't know. I watched it today. But uh, it, so Trish doesn't care about, like, Spider-Man, so I, I didn't get to see Spider-Man yet. Oh, you didn't? Uh, I heard a lot of people like this. It's the movie of the decade, apparently. I'm hearing. So I saw an interview with Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss, Dude, right, about it. So good. And they were like, oh, how does it feel? Like, you're doing this? She goes, it's great. And she looks over to Keanu Reeves and she goes, you. Because they were saying, like, you look great as you get older. And she's like, well, thank you. And she goes, but you, you haven't aged. And Keanu Reeves leans in and he goes, I tried. I really, <laughs> really tried to just. It's. The premise. Have you? Are you a fan of the Matrix? Movies oh yeah, or? yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Because you know, some people watch them, but they don't get it. It's like a whole. 
the premise of the movie. So at the first hour, like I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? I'm kind of like, eh, what am I doing here? That's great. The premise of the movie is nuts. You know what I'm saying? And like when you get to the middle and then it starts going to the end, like, you know, it starts beating towards the story. Mm. You're like, what? Like it's, it's going in a really good direction. Well, well, that clip when she goes, I think we know each other. And she, it, he's like, I like the fact that they gave him his car. He's had the long hair for a while, right? So while they were filming John Wick, they jumped into another movie. And then when they jumped into this, they were like, do, do you cut his hair and bring it back? Because, you know, but his new character is supposed to be he's dead in the last one. Well, he's shooting John Wick. He shot John Wick at the simultaneous at the right. same time. And so they were like, no, don't cut the hair. Because yeah, everybody the same was hair. like, yeah, keep the same he, hair. Dude, he, he's such a... I, you know what? I remember back in the day, I'm like, Keanu Reeves is like the most robotic actor. Like, I don't... Listen, I don't care what kind of actor he is. Every single movie that dude makes is awesome. <laughs> I mean, he made a couple of bad, like, you know, shitty ones with the love story ones, but... Dude, this it's just don't kill John Wick. Look, I look. John, I, I love all the John Wicks, man. I, I, took, I love the John Wicks. One night, I showed, um, uh, I played John Wick for here. We switching glasses? No, that's the one you had for the same one. Oh, but this okay. is for the uh, original. This is the first one. I, original. 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 I, bang bang. I, bang, bang. I played a uh, John Wait, Wick. Hold on a minute. We had different ones. <laughs> yeah. No. There's one, yeah. two, and three. Yeah, that's the third one. But what's the third one? The third one is. It's like chocolate and coffee. And coffee. So it's not like that one. No, it's not as strong. Not as strong. Oh. Do you want some? some? Take a yeah, some. I'm already halfway through the the second so, one. So, but yeah, but you don't have to finish it. Oh shit! I'm gonna walk home. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess I'll give you the hoodie <laughs> next week. Oh, I love this. This, this I played John. This Chokito off. So that's a lot to give him. This is um a lot of dead air for people right now. We're, I just, played, uh, we're just drinking now. It folks. doesn't matter. I played. I uh, actually forgot we were I on. I played here. John Wick for my for Tara. Played for my wife, and she listened. She watched it, and she was like, "Is there another one?" And we played the other one, and and you know how long it's like two and a half hours. So good. So at the end, it was like almost like two. It was just like, is there? There's another one. There's See, the a third thing is, one. if you take them for what they are, they're phenomenal movies. That's you know, it's kind of like The Expendables, you know. And I listen. yes, but I like that line when he goes, "What did you do?" He goes, "I killed it. It's just a dog." And he goes, "You killed his dog." Like uh, great, no, it's like great. It's you know, like you know how long it's like saying like we're not going to deal with this in one movie. This is going to be three movies that you made. It's, it's crazy. The Parabellum was so good. The yeah. last one was like oh, man, it was really yeah. When he good. goes out there and they're explaining oh, everything so to him, all the characters are great. But <clears throat> what I mean is, when you have a movie so violent and like like ridiculously over the top, I remember um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was 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 fucking with Bruce with Sylvester Stallone, and like they they have a beef right now. Like right now, it's on like. On social media, because Arnold Arnold created the, the Expendables or you so like that's, that movie. So that I liked them. I thought they were entertaining. Dude, I think that was the they worst. Were yeah, because they take all the, they take the all the, the stars, the reviews, all the, the action stars, put them together and make a movie that's supposed to be about explosions and, and it's like Fast and the Furious. Yeah, it's, right? like, it's like a Michael Bay yeah, like was fest. Like, excuse me. It was like a like excuse a. Me. Like a bad porn. Movie. I thought it was good. So I thought it was good for what it was. That's I thought it was saying. great when they brought movie. Mel Gibson as the oh, bad I guy. Loved it. And then they had Chuck Norris in it. Mel Gibson was in that movie. Um, they brought in Wesley Snipe. Dude, they had everybody. They had everybody. They but those had guys, Smokey and the Bandit. Do you know I loved why, it. Do you know why? Uh, do you know why they brought in Wesley Snipes? Yeah, he owes so much money to the IRS. They he were like, money. Yeah, he's, broke. <laughs> he's in everything now. That guy's making Same movies Same as Nicolas Cage. Right. Yo, there's a great trailer. Nicolas Cage for, like the last seven movies yeah, yo, Nicolas, on Netflix. Nick Cage has a great movie coming out. It's called, guess what? Nick Cage. It's about somebody going to see him about playing a role. Playing him. But it's him. And they're like, you have to do it. Like, you have to dye his hair, do the whole Nick Cage thing. And it's just a movie He's about such him. A weirdo. It's so great. That yeah. dude's a wacko. See, there you go. Weirdo. He's a weirdo. Is the, is, is the... Oh, so it's okay to call Nick Cage a no, weirdo. No, but see, but, but, but it's a good way. You're not saying anything negative. How do you know I'm not saying anything negative? Don't tell me what I'm saying. He's not a he's negative a weirdo. person. Yeah, but it's not negative. Oh, he's kind of negative. That guy's whack job. He lost a lot, all of his money. He did a lot of weird. Well, stuff. that's the IRS and that like no, he property. was a drunk. He was like no, no, no. That's not so, how he lost his money. Same I'm, thing with Wesley. Stein. I'm just telling you as a person, he was a he's one of those guys that goes on alcohol binges and treats people like shit. That's what I'm telling you. I want to ask him. I've this. heard that many, many times. I'm gonna look it up. Yeah, I'm just telling you. So anyway, <laughs> point is, point is. Nick Cage. <laughs> no, I don't even know. I forgot my point. Nick Cage was. Chokito's got it me has stupid. nothing to do with it. 
<laughs> no, <laughs> nothing. He just showed up. He's, just a, he's just a, a good actor in bad movies. No, we were talking about the the, the Spencer. He's a bad actor um, in good movies. No, the point was that uh, um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah, said. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger said. Yeah. He said. <laughs> not, not, it's not, it's not okay. He said to, to Sylvester Stallone that I got you to agree to make the worst movie in the history of movies on, on social media. So Sylvester Stallone is like, dude, this guy asked me to be in his, like, in, I guess he wrote the movie, but it was Arnold's idea. Mm -hmm. And so Arnold's, Arnold's joke is that I came up with the idea to make this ridiculous movie and so Sly bought it up and did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beef they got on. And I'm sitting there going, but it's a good movie, though. So you gave him an idea. And I guess the, the like reviews were awful and everybody said it's the worst movie he's ever made. It's, so I Sylvester Stallone's like, yeah, really? You big, <laughs> your big melon head? Like, they're going back and forth. Yeah. You got to check it out. It's it's so freaking funny, man. But I saw, I was like, is this real? Like, I thought they were just playing it up. I think it's serious. Because they were friends for a bit now. <laughs> A, Schwarzenegger other. has an app where um, it, all the proceeds go to charity and you when you pay for it. But what you do is you upload this upload video. So like you tell him he takes quotes from his movies and he puts it up there. So they were on the Graham Norton show and all the guests out there. I worked to, on that show for a year, by the way. Which one? The Graham Norton show. But see, they didn't. It didn't Unbelievable. Work, they didn't work out here. They were. Don't tell me that they did. They worked in America no, for no, two no. seasons. It didn't work out here. Oh, Not no. that it didn't. They only did a tour. Yeah, he but, only did a tour. He wasn't never intended to come out here. Well, time. actually, it, they were. From what they, I was understanding, when they they wanted to sign him was to get him here. Right out there, he gets away with all everything there. Every it was amazing. He it's couldn't the best. do that here. Yes, but it's the best talk show America. ever. Two, the best talk without show a ever. shadow of a doubt, best night talk show in history. One night, um, uh, Matt Damon's on there with Bill Murray, and I forgot this other English actor who they were do, talking about. Um, um, the movie, I forgot the name of the movie, but where they were in the military and they found the, the lost art that the Nazis stole. Right. So Bill Murray's a, a big drinker, right? And he's known for drinking games and all this. And he's convincing them to shoot down uh, champagne Ooh. shots, right? Like he's just going back and forth. And Matt Damon is laughing hysterical. This was like 40 minutes into the show. And he laughs and he goes, this is the best talk show I've ever been on. He can't hold his laugh. It hurts. There's a long list of that. Like of people Dude, that went. I on was it. drinking with him at the rap show for two hours straight. And he literally was sitting. Graham Norton was sitting there, and I was with the crew. We had a little, we would you know with the camera. I was with the camera crew, and the, I was the utility. But uh, first of all, every show they shot at night, which was different than anything we ever did. They shot at six o'clock at night, to, and it was it would go till eleven. So, and then every night they would have food and beer. And drinks after the show. Every night in the green room. So after every show, people go downstairs, drink. I had to take the train, so I wasn't really doing that every every night, but I would hang free beer. You know, you're drinking in my own office. There was a smoke, you know, the smoking section. There was a bunch of us that smoked, you know what I mean? So he knew that. In television production, I'd say more than 75%. I'd say about 75% of the people in television production smoke weed. Like, I, it's that high. And it, they're, they're very, like, open about it. Good. So... Graham Norton knew, and we're all like, you know, we, there was a section where people were going to smoke, and it was a, you know where, uh, it was in the village, the, the rap party was in this hotel, next to the, um, the the hotel with the circle windows, in the village, there used to be a methadone clinic back in the day, uh, the Nautilus or some shit like that, Okay. it looks like, you know, it's like, it's, they redid it, and there's like a sick, like, you know, terrace area or whatever, so we had the rap party there. And we're all hanging out, and fucking Graham Norton was just literally like, and you know, he's a gay British man. And this English, dude, he, no, I'm sorry, he's Irish. Sorry, Graham Norton's Irish. I don't know. Well, he sounds British. He doesn't have an Irish accent. He has a British accent. So, do you know that there are more than one one well, Irish he was, accent? I, he he's, was Irish, born in England, probably. He's a gay, he's, a lot he's of Irish gay and he's Irish. But go ahead. Whatever, dude. I, he's fucking from England, and he would talk. He was the way he was talking, like you know, you're talking to him, like you know. Like, like a regular dude at the end of the night for two hours, and because it's different, the culture is different when you're talking to people that aren't from here. With him, bro, the guy was, and he was like, I can't hang with them. Like, he, you know, he's like, he would go over, say hello, and because it was a rap party, they'd say, "Great, I'm thankful to take a picture." I'm coming back to you guys. All right, you guys saved me. Like it was that kind of thing. I can't deal with these people. Yo, he was so freaking cool. Like when I, he was definitely one of the coolest 
celebrity talents that I've ever watched. When I the first time I watched his uh, talk show, he was sitting at home. There was nothing going on. <laughs> I had a few drinks. And I'm watching it, and he's interviewing the celebrities, and every celebrity on there is having a great time, right? Like, and everyone's drinking, and they get he they as soon as you're done, they put the the new drink right in front of your table. Right. Here it's different, but there they put it out in front of you. So I was watching some, and I was laughing hysterical, right? So this is second episode, third episode, next week comes watching shows, Graham Norton. Now I'm laughing with like it's so good. One night, it's probably about like 12 and drinking a little tipsy and watch it. And some some actor is on. And the good thing is they put all the actors and performers all in the same day. So they're all sitting at the same table and they're all telling stories about being in the business. What this show he finds. He does his homework. He finds most embarrassing things about you that you wouldn't expect. Like I'm watching all these hysterical laughing. TV's there. I'm here. That's the bedroom door behind me. And I mean, like it hurts. I'm leaning over, I'm laughing. I can feel the presence of the door opening and I turn and look. There's my wife at the time and she's like this. With one eye open, she looks at me. She looks at the TV and she goes, Graham, huh? I said, yeah. Your wife at the time. Oh, God. I, she, I, the wife, and at the time she might not have been my wife. I don't know. She goes, I don't remember. So she looks, she goes, don't, don't interrupt. Don't interrupt. Don't <laughs> I'm interrupt. not. Don't I'm interrupt. listening to your story. And she goes, Graham, huh? And I went, <laughs> yeah. And that's what I said. And she went, okay. I went to sleep. And it was because it was. I was so loud. It was so fun. It's just hilarious. It's so funny. He's so funny. But dude. the mad, the thing with the with the um, and they smoke, dude. They do everything on the show. So but, if yeah. you if you're a weed smoker, you could smoke weed. If you're if you're uh, there's um, episodes where everybody Mark, drinks alcohol. Mark Wahlberg. Everybody's where, drinking while they're, they're asking on the set. him to stop because he's so Tom drunk. Hanks. Tom Hanks was like, I don't really do this, and he's not like wasn't like a huge party. Tom Hanks is like. This is the greatest environment ever. He goes, this is insane. You just get everybody so loose. But the show on the BBC, that those episodes, like season 22 or 23, you watch those. Now it's a little different. Everybody's spread out, but they still like into He has a bar. The guy makes drinks for you as yeah. you want them. So it's amazing. You, you watch them. Some of these come from the back. Like in there, just hammered. Yeah, yeah, they're hammered. But yeah, they yeah. all have a good time together. So the one with Matt Damon, it was Bill Murray. And I forgot the movie. Again, I forgot the movie. You, the, he like he laughs so hard. That he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't see himself doing anything else. Mike, you wake. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, wake up. We caught him snoring. That was terrible, Mike. Yeah, well, anyway, how are you snoring on the air, Mike? The chokito. Anyway, if there was more, we'll just eliminate it right there. E Mikey doesn't like it. The chokito. What do you mean? If there was a more? I don't know. That's the end. That is the end. Oh, that is the end. It's that, 8.54. It, it's the end of the show as you Good know night, it. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Do, 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 do. Remember Bowser? Yeah. Bowser. I hate to leave you, but I really must, must say no. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good, night. Good, thing our pro- Good thing we're not trying to be singers. Good night, sweetheart. It anyway, the Coquito Challenge was successful. The most successful. I'm going to read Coquito something. I'm going to read a parting gift. Co- Coquito Challenge ever. Just because, this you know, is the boomstick. we do live in, that is the boomstick. Actually, can I pour me some little more Chiquito? Uh, so, <laughs> not Chiquito, Chiquito. Chiquito. I, listen, if, if one thing that people know about me is I love and care about my friends and family <laughs> and fellow humans. Slurred your words. I really do. Yeah, I'm slurring my words, you fucking Chiquito. <laughs> um... But what's going on is a little nutty. Just be careful, people. Like, you don't always have to believe the hype. They're not always telling you what's the best for you. If you think that, then I'm sorry, but it's proof that they're not. You know, I I mentioned that I'm allowed to serve somebody who has one vaccination shot, but not the the ones that make them safe. It just proves that it's about, it's more about control than it is about safety. The NHL has four people in the league not vaccinated they shut the league down the nfl is like 90 percent percent vaccinated they shut the league down and again i'm not an anti-vax guy i think it's a it's a good thing when it when it helps and when you're forcing people's jobs and livelihoods it's not a good thing right henry kissinger who was widely regarded as like on both parties was widely regarded as one of the um you know best kind of like he was an immigrant from nazi germany came from nazi germany he was like one of those guys that made come to America, make a better life for themselves like a lot of people did in the 40s. 
um, 30s and 40s. Um, and he was always respected among people. And ninth in 2009, and I po- I posted this, and it's a literally it's a newspaper article yep. from when he literally said it. In 2009, um, he he was in front of the WHO, mm-hmm. and he basically said if it was about it was a council on e- eugenics in 2009, and he basically said uh, and quoted, "Once the herd accepts mandatory vaccinations, it's game over. They will accept anything." Forcible blood or organ de- organ donation for the greater good. We can genetically modify children and sterilize them for the greater good. Control sheep minds and you control the herd. Vaccine makers stand to make billions. And many of you in this room are the investors. It's a big win-win for you. We thin out the herd and the herd pays for the extermination. So now think about what this man, who was a leader in the world for a very long time, Basically said to the WHO, who is basically giving us our commands right now. You know who's in charge of all this? Pfizer. Every politician that's out there, they've donated to they him. All donate- every every, every um, media outlet, they've donated to him. Why? Because the next thing is, who's going to make a billion dollars? Who's going to make $10 billion? Follow the money. Right. Like, it's there. So, I mean, look. Just be smart, go, Just be smart, folks. Like, I, I want a vaccine that's going to help everybody. Hopefully, this pill. They got a pill that's going to be an antiviral pill. Fine. They, then, they finally then, released then the, the anti-vax shot. No, but you people know what? Will take the- Listen, a vaccine is a, a shot is a lot more invasive than a fucking pill. I think people will feel a little more comfortable taking a pill. A shot is a, a, a vaccine can alter your DNA. It can change your DNA. Your, the way your DNA is is basically functioning from that phone. Yeah, you've taken vaccinations new, your whole life. I'm so. not, but it's different. It's a different kind of vaccine. I'm not saying. Well, my, I think well, you know what I've is, taken vaccines my whole life that have been studied for decades. Right. Well, yeah, but I'm not taking a vaccine. This isn't a. You know why? You know why? Do you, you know, know why, why we were forced into? But it? Do you know why? No, you're not forced. It's illegal. No, 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 no. It's you illegal. You know why we were forced into getting the shot? Who forced right. you? I didn't force. No, nah, you're not listening. You're, you're missing what I'm saying. I'm not saying forcing the people, forcing to have it fast. So when the virus was found out, right? I don't know. We don't do. I don't want to go into this. But when the virus was found out, the majority of the people were screaming, "Get us the vaccination! Get us the vaccination! Get us that!" So they got the vaccination from Europe. That's why you think they did this? Did what? Made I'm just vaccine? saying why we got the shot, where the shot came from, right? After that, it's up to you to get it. No, the point is, it's an emergency, sir. It's an emergency. Well, vaccine. that's what they said, right? So it was it's not for- what they said. It's it's a le- It's legally emergency. The reason why they cannot force you to get it, they can't force you to do it. That's not what I'm. I'm not talking about forcing to get it. What I'm, I'm saying just, is, that's the people- my point to you, though. Is I'm saying it's it's because it's still an emergency status. So the fact that they're forcing something down your throat well, the, that is still in emergency status. So when something's in this emergency... This is only an opinion. It's, it's, of course, it's my opinion. Facebook but that, fact checkers. That's my whole... Well, you know what's funny? That Zuckerberg, that only Zuckerberg was on... Um, Zuckerberg was on... Which, uh, he, he testified two days ago. I guess somebody... I don't even know what, what it's about. He literally testified that the fact checkers are only opinionated. opinionated Did you see that? Yeah. He literally said that. He goes, my fact checkers are opinionated. Well, I got one for you. Fox News. There's a lot of people that love Fox News. Yeah, but they're crazy too, though. Fox News was sued, right? They were saying they were misleading. The reason they won it in two lawsuits, major lawsuits, was because what they said was, we're not news, we're news opinion. Meaning you're not really telling me but the that's news. that's why people are just yeah, giving you opinion. And that's tabloid. That's when Fox, that's when Fox News is They tabloid. all are. But CNN is awful. They Even all worse. are. They look all at, are. Look at CNN. But my point is, Every my, commercial here's my point. You could see facts. You could see, what, you could see what's going on. We had a pedophile network. Exactly. S- Michael said, Jackson. I, Michael. He said, listen, he said that with a with a southern accent. When he, he was like, pedophile, pedophile network. Epstein Island, man. Yo, dude, for real? Yo, for real? It's 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 really in front of your eyes. Wait, I don't want to make your own decision. I don't want to end it with this. People just pay attention. I don't yeah. want to end it with this. Well, no, because it's out there. You okay, wait, I got something better you than that. To. I got something better than that. We well, you're not go. gonna end it with that. Yeah, we're right. not gonna end it with right. that. That's not how the show's gonna end. What I'm gonna end this with is, is regardless, like, you know, we're not gonna be around I'm not gonna be able to go around family or whatever, just my wife and myself. Yeah, we gotta at cancel home. shit, yeah. You know, um I hope you have an, an amazing Merry Christmas. Merry Mikey, Christmas to you, my Happy man. and amazing Merry Christmas. Michael, Same Merry day. Christmas. We will Likewise. we will all have our own thing. Yeah, you Mike, just gotta get through it. Mikey's gonna sleep from now for the next three days. Mike's He's gonna it, write through Christmas sleep until the New Year's Eve. Because of the Choquito. <laughs> well listen, you know what? If, if if COVID's knocking down Christmas plans, just go to sleep until Just like go to Thursday. sleep. Don't worry about it. It'll be yeah. all right. You'll wake up and I'll show we'll be back. Anyway. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry we, just stay safe. I want to bring Christmas. that up so everybody stay safe. Have a very Merry Christmas. Love your family. Kiss somebody. Hug somebody. Right it's all about you. spread love. Thank you very much.
and Merry Christmas. Peace and chicken grease. Grandma got run over by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve You can say there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa, we believe She'd been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to go But she forgot her medication And she staggered through the door out in the snow When we found her Christmas morning At the scene of the attack She had hoof prints on her forehead And incriminating claws